very much. Have a great day. Right, well I'm here with uh, one of the Cornish crews, uh, Kieran Hicks and Frankie Courtney. Um, you've had a few appearances in the Masters, Kieran. Um, how do you think your chances are today? Yeah, hopefully it should be all good. Um, this is a track where we actually made the Masters final a couple of years ago. Uh, we'd get on well with this track, so hopefully it should be a good day. I'm pretty confident. So you, 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 you're fairly confident. Uh, you've got a new passenger uh, in Frankie. Uh, it's your first time really as a, as a Masters passenger. How are you feeling for it? Yeah, not too bad. Should go all well, I think. Yeah, I know you're not green to it, but uh, you've done a bit of uh, old and new sidecars. But uh, how's this going to fare compared to those? Well, it's not a lot different. I mean, it's passenger, so you kind of know what you're doing. So yeah, to see how it works out. Yeah, and uh, you're both both feeling confident and um, no no problems with the machinery, it's all as it should be? Yeah, it seems to be very good at the minute. Um, yeah. We haven't been out that much this season, um, but the times that we've been out, it's worked really well. So I'm confident in the bike, so hopefully it should be a good day. So who do you think would be your main competitors in today's meeting? To be fair, it's an open field today. There's so many quick riders coming up through. Um, Trevor Heath's going well. We've got Mark, Tom, Paul. It's just an open field, really. It could be anyone's. Yeah, so the Masters is normally pretty open for most classes. So, uh, yeah, um, just wish you well with today and uh, hope you make the final and uh, see if you can get on the podium. Lovely job. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good luck, lads. Cheers. Cheers. Right, well, I'm now here with Team 92, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. Um, yeah, it's been a long time since you've been on the podium, Paul, for the Masters. So especially on the top spot. When was the last time you was on the top spot? Yeah, 2004 with you, Kev. Oh, that's <laughs> it. And what a, what a year we had that year. Right, a bit of a mess around. Okay, um, so how's things going this year with your uh, riding? It's, the bike's not been brilliant, actually. We've had a few little technical problems. Um, we got them sorted last week, really. Uh, so the bike's going brilliant now. That's it. And uh, how are you feeling on the back, Richard? All right, yeah, all good. We've made a little, like Paul said, we've changed a few little things um, that we decided to do about two weeks ago. Got it all ready last week, didn't we, and went out and uh, seemed to be doing what we wanted. That's good. I see you've got two machines here today. Paul, you've got a borrowed machinery? Yeah, we borrowed Stacey Stell's bike. Uh, it's a different engine, but very similar to my bike. Very similar setup. Yeah. I, I, I see you've uh, been messing around as well with a bit of 500 uh, chairs. and uh, yeah. It's going the wrong way, but how do you feel with that? It's been going really good, actually. Richard, being an experienced passenger, has made it a bit easier for me. But yeah, we, we're getting faster on it, and uh, it's, it's getting really good, actually. That's it, and you had a busy week a few weeks ago. Three classes, I hear. Yep. Yeah, I've just about got over it, thanks. Just about got over it. A few, <laughs> yeah. few bruises and batters? Yeah, yeah, a few bruises, yeah, in uh, difficult places. That's it, and how, how are you feeling going into today's meeting? You feeling confident? Yeah, always confident, you know. We, all, we always go out there to win. And yeah, we'll get our best shot. Just make the final and see where you get this, from there, really. This is it, yeah. That's it. Well, I wish you best of both, both of you the best of luck today. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you on the podium. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks Good luck. Here. See you. <laughs> well, I'm now here with uh, Paul Cooper. A um, few good results this year. A few uh, foreign meetings you've done pretty well in. Um, how are you feeling going into today? Yeah, things are going quite well. Um, recent run of form has been been pretty good, been okay. But been in a meeting like this, there's probably six, eight riders who could win it. You know, it's going to be a very tough meeting, very tough. F fortunately for me, things are kind of going in the right direction at the moment. So hopefully we can make that final and then have a bit of a saucy final and maybe get on the steps. But uh, it's going to be a tough day. 
I'm feeling pretty confident, but I guess a majority of other riders are feeling confident. So it's uh, it's going to be fun, exciting. It's going to be good good for the crowd to watch a, a very saucy meeting. That's it. Well, say I, uh, I I know you've had a, a second before in the Masters. And you only know that because I just told you. Well, yeah, I've got. Can't give that. But uh, yeah, you you've been on the podium before at the Masters, so it's not going to be a strange thing. Um, so yeah. Um, who, who, who's, who is your main contender? For that, that dog sounds a bit like he wants to have a go as well, doesn't it? I'm doing an interview here, come on. Sort your dogs out. So who's your uh, main contenders? Uh, th like I say, there's, there's probably six, eight guys who could who could do it. You've obviously got Zach Weichenek, Jake Mumford, Chad Wurzfeldt, uh, and you, you've got James Wright's turned up, you've got Bomber Harris, obviously. You, you know, there's, there's, there's probably, well, I keep saying, six, eight guys who could... Turn it on, and if if the day's right for them, a bit of good luck and stuff. It, yeah, they, they, there's a number of people who could win it. So my plan is just to get out there consistently, race, make the final, and then in the final, get a good trap and and get set among it. But we'll see how it goes. That's it. We'll say uh, yeah. Hopefully you'll have a good result. So you've got two machineries with you and uh, two track plus bikes that are going very track well. Plus. Uh, yeah, well. Track plus. We've track plus. that in, is it? Uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. Why no, not? You, you, you've got to get some of these sponsors. Absolutely. Don't, we don't get yeah, well, but, um, if you, you can see all my sponsors there, you see I, I'm helped out with uh, with people and it's great. I, I do appreciate all the support I, I get from all the people who help me out and from the fans, you know, the, the fans are great with the cheering for like the other week when I won the, the well, joint win the championship, it was great to have the support from the crowd there as well. So Yeah, yeah there was a lot of support for, from everybody there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah, just wish you the best of luck today, Paul. Have a good one, stay safe and uh, hope to see you up on the podium, well, possibly in the number one spot this time. We'll definitely try our best and if I do get on the roster, you'll buy me a beer. Deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. No worries. Cheers, guys. Well, I'm now here with uh, Trevor and Sam Heath, uh, a young combination actually from down in the south, south there, and uh, yeah, quite a surprise seeing you boys get on the uh, bikes and how much of a good uh, trip, uh, well, a good, a good um, season you've had so far. Uh, yeah, I think it's been going all right for us. In the winter, spent a lot of time just getting the bike right for us, and it seems to be coming together going all right. That's it, we'll say a lot of family history really uh, between you lot with uh, the whole family racing really. Um, yeah, how do you feel about today's meeting? I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, all our families done it. This was Dad's first ever grass track, this track. Um, but no, I think today go well. Are, are you feeling confident with the machinery? And Yeah, I think the bike's in a good place. Yeah. Got good people around us to help us. To see what happens. Well, yeah, so yes, uh, I think the field is fairly open to everybody, really. There's the main contenders, like I say, you've got your Mark Costar and such, like, you know, what can we say about him? But uh, I think, to be honest, it could be anyone's day, to be honest. I definitely think everyone's beatable today. Yeah. Um, we managed to beat Mark in a race at the start of the year. Yeah, um, I see that one, that was quite impressive. And we managed to overtake him last week. Um, yeah. So hopefully, we can do it in the one race that matters, the final. That's it, that's, that's the main one everybody wants, so uh, if you're feeling confident and bike machinery stays as it should be, then uh, you, you two boys are in with a shot. Hopefully. Brilliant. Thank you. Yep. Well, I'm now here with uh, Jake Mulford, uh, one of the up and coming youngsters. Um, so how are you feeling going into today's meeting? I know last year's one wasn't very good. Uh, are you feeling confident with this year? Yeah, well, you, it just, you just take it as it comes. I'm not really thinking anything about, about the meeting really, I'm just just take every race as it is and hope, hopefully it'll go well. That's it, so you do a bit of speed by and everything and uh, you're feeling confident in that? Yeah, yeah, speed has been going really well for me. I've, uh, I've been riding, a, well, I've had a couple of meetings recently which have luckily all gone well, so yeah, both grass and speedway are both going really well. That's it, we'll say, uh, have you had a good look around the track? Is it looking grippy, is it looking slick? How do you think it's gonna go? Uh, I think at the minute it looks quite grippy that I think there's been water in it a lot so yeah it should hold it should hold the dust down quite well today. That's it, are you looking just to try and get in the final and then see how it goes from there? Yeah it'd be good to make the final and then then you just take that race as as the race comes. That's it, well so you have a good day and uh, stay safe out there and enjoy the racing. Lovely, thank you. Um, right, okay then, uh, you started off uh, last year doing a few meetings uh, around, around sort of club meetings and uh, you've done a full season this year, how have your results been this year? Um, we haven't done too bad to be fair, um, we've had a little bit of bike issues but we've had some good results to go with it to be fair so quite nervous with 
going with the Masters? Yeah, I would say the Masters is quite a scary, daunting uh, feat, believe me. Uh, so, yeah, your first time into it, and uh, is everything up to standard as you uh, want it to be? You know, Are you happy with your machinery? Yeah, plenty of nights down the workshop, to be fair. So. That's what it's about, plenty of, <laughs> plenty of sleepless nights. Um, but yeah, have you, have you walked around the track and seen how it's like? No, we're going to be in the passenger, we're going to go around in the set and have a look, yep. uh, see how it goes. Are you confident with everything today? I think so. Yeah, I you want to so. try and make the final? I I think at least the semis is good for me. Yeah, I'll say if first. you make the semis, that's, that's a bonus. Like I say, your first year you've done ex exceptionally well. Um, so yeah, just, just wish you the best. Lovely. Stay safe and uh, enjoy today. Lovely, thank you. I'm right, now standing here with Zach Wajanek, I hope I've pronounced that yep. correctly. Um, I know you've won the Masters before. Um, don't ask me when it was, I can't remember. Uh, but how are you feeling today? Yeah, good. So, um, should should be a good day. Uh, we rode here once before and it was well run meeting and uh, everything went alright. So, um, yeah, hopefully everyone stays safe and we can get through to the end. That's it. So, I know in your uh, early years you had a lot of support from Paul Hurry. Uh, how did he help you with your... Uh, ability on riding, a lot of mental um, input. Yeah, it was good. Um, just from having some, when I was young, someone that's already been there and been to the abroad meetings and stuff like that, it's handy to have, knowing how it all runs and that. So, um, yeah, Paul's great and yeah, we're racing against him today. Well, that's it, yeah. So, yeah, I, you've done some European means this year. How, how was that? <laughs> yeah, good, the world long track and the European semi, so we've qualified for, um, the meeting at Swingfield in October, the final. So um, yeah, should be good. Something to look forward to. Have you, have you had a good look at the track today? Only just walked around it once, and um, yeah, it's a lot similar to what it was the year before. So uh, yeah, it should be all right. Obviously, it's pretty warm today. So um, um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, so it's done a lot of work. It's not going to be as warm as it has been down here lately, but uh, hopefully it won't cause uh, too many issues. It won't yeah. make too much dust. So um, are you feeling confident? Yeah, it should be good. Um, See how it goes. Are you looking for it's a podium the, or just a final? Yeah, no, it's all on the final, isn't it? So um, if you can stay safe and get through to the final, anything can happen there. That's so. what it's all about, staying safe. Will yeah. you enjoy your racing today? Thanks, and like I say, stay safe and uh, have a good one. Cheers, thank you. Right, now we're here with uh, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch from uh, up the Midlands, Oxford, right? Oxford, yeah, that's right. And uh, right, you've uh, no, no, not really no slouches to this. You've got race experience behind the pair of you. Uh, road racing, I do believe, and a bit of motocross. Uh, what made you uh, come into the <laughs> crazy world of sidecars? It was his idea. Yeah. Well, we, was, we were we were involved. My dad was involved in North Barts Club when I was a kid. So we live on the doorstep of Dalton Barrett, where where they used to to race. Used to in the race 90s. a few yeah. big meetings there. Yeah, yeah. some big yeah. meetings. So was so involved in grass as a kid, not not from racing, but uh, me and Vinny when we were in the race truck when we were at a road racing meeting, um, we were just talking rubbish about racing bikes as usual. And I mentioned grass track and. Um, we both agreed that it'd be a, a good laugh, so we went and bought, went and bought a, an outfit, and uh, it, it started as a bit of a, as a bit of a, um, a bit of a wind up. But we went and bought one, and then we had to do something with it. So uh, that was it. We, we we entered a meeting, and Vinny jumped on the back, and that was a, that was it. That's it. Well, bring you in, Vinny. How, how, how do you find uh, actually going uh, just one direction? With, oh, uh, I enjoy with it. Mike? Yeah, it's good. It's obviously different to anything we've done before, and you know it, it works. We it. we you... obviously do a lot together. We understand each other, and it That's yeah, half it, the battle, it, yeah. it works. I think I know what he's thinking half the time, and uh, I think he knows I know that. So you know, I know if he's going to try and do an upside inside, that, that, inside that's, pass that's on the last what you corner. Sport, you know, the, when I used to ride, coming, so. yeah, when I used to ride, you say you used to be exactly the same. You've so, got to yeah, understand what each other's yeah. doing. If one yeah. makes a mistake, the other guy could cover it. Yet. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, you basically started off at the end of last year doing a few meetings and. Uh, yeah, you've done a full season this year. Uh, you had a good podium last week down at the uh, Winchester meeting. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, it was nice to get the monkey off our back and get on the podium. Um, we we only just scraped in the final, but uh, got a good gate, made it. Uh, we were in fourth, managed to get past Clint Blondell because it was it was dusty. It wasn't it wasn't particularly nice, but I knew once we got past him, um, I blasted him full of dust like he had been doing to us the whole race, and then that was uh, making it very difficult. But yeah, no, it was it was uh, it was good to get and. Uh, I just feel like every week we're starting to. I can feel the bike does what I want it to do, and it's because Vinny's doing what, what, what he, what he should that's be doing, it, or getting better. Doing and it, what he should look, be doing. Then, it feels like yeah. the bike's getting better, but it's actually probably the passengers getting a lot better, and we're sort of working together, and it's yeah, it's good. It's that's coming. it. So, so a good result last week has put you in good stead, really. Hopefully, for a, yeah. For a favourite today, you know, you, you 
confident going into the meeting yeah, with, with that result. Yeah. So yeah. you can only do what you can do today, really. So uh, yeah, best of luck to the both of you, and uh, yeah, see if you can make the final and go from Thank there. Thank you very much. We'll do what we can. Right, well, good Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Well, I'm standing here with uh, Matt from Arola. Uh, I think last time I stood next to you like this having an interview, well, I think it was the 2004 Masters, and you do believe was in the... <laughs> what spot was you in? Uh, third, I believe. Well, where I was, was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you might have been first. Oh, right, OK, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, long time ago, that one, yeah. mate. But um, how, are you <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling with today's meeting? Good, mate, good. It's been a long, long week. We've had a few issues with the bike, a uh, lot of time at the garage. Uh, a lot of time in other people's garages, <laughs> um, but touch wood, we've uh, done everything we can now and yeah. we've just got to hope that uh, it's all good and we'll have a good day. I see, you had a few good results through this, through this season, um, Yeah. are you confident with today's meeting? Yes, actually, we're feeling good, we feel we've got a podium place in us, um, it's just about if you can met the final, who knows what's going to happen in the final, uh, with, the, with it being a, you know, whoever crossed the line first wins, so... No, we're, we're feeling good. We're feeling good. We had, that's like the accidental new bike. Um, it was only meant to go and have a new front end, and it kind of snowballed, and it ended up being a complete new chassis. So and your pockets were quite deep? Well, the wife's pockets are quite deep. <laughs> um, but, um, and it's, uh, it is slightly different to last year's, and it's just propelled us on that little bit more, I think. Who do you think your main opposition is going to be to look out for today? Um, well, Will Offen's real quick, and I would say he's my main man next <laughs> All right, Will. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, you, you, the two Costa lads, they're, you know, they're so quick. Colin, you can never count out. And then I think, I think then there's a great, great big bunch of us that are all on similar pace, and, uh, you know, it, it's a, it, it is a really exciting time, actually. We've got a lot of people going similar similar speed. Yeah, it's a good good 10 people yeah, all on the yeah, same yeah. sort of pace. Uh, yeah. Are you looking for a podium? Yeah, I feel I've got it in me. And um, uh, I don't see why not. Yeah, That's it. Well, we hope to see you up on there. Thank if not you. in the final, if hopefully on the podium. Somewhere. Nice one. Thank so you very you much. You have a good day, Matt, and enjoy yourself. Stay safe. All right. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Well, I'm now uh, going to have a work with uh, Chad Worksville. Uh, one of the youngest riders in the field by the looks at only 18 years of age. Uh, your first appearance in the Masters, how are you feeling? Yeah, it's good. My, um, this, is a bit, this will be my second appearance now. I'd like to try and do better than I did last year. But that, obviously we'll see how the meeting goes first. That's it. We'll say you've uh, had some good results this year, Ray, riding on the grass. And uh, just want to try and carry that on into, into, the, into the day's meeting. And uh, are you feeling confident? Yeah, I'm feeling confident. This year's gone well so far. Uh, we've been abroad a bit, that's gone well, so hopefully you can carry on today and I can do well. That's it, a bit of experience abroad works, works wonders really, I find, when I was riding. Um, who's your main competitors going to be today? I don't know, all of them here, so it'll be a hard meeting definitely. That's it, and uh, you want to basically your aim to get in the final and then see what happens? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, if you can make the final, how do you think you'll go? Well, it depends on the start in the final. You've got to make a good start and then see what happens after that. That's it. Well, say, so all the bikes are running in the background. It's a bit noisy here. Uh, you have a good day. Enjoy your race and stay safe, yeah? Thank you. Well, well I'm now here with uh, Tom Cossar and passenger Wayne Richards. Ricard, however you want to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, right, you haven't really done a lot of uh, meetings this year, Tom. Uh, to be honest, I think you've done a couple. Um, how's that gone? Well, the first one we did was uh, Budley. It went really, really well. Um, won all of our heats. Mark pepped us in the final, so we got a second, comfortable second, really, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. Um, but then, unfortunately, I had a bit of a mishap testing on uh, a sports bike at Donington Park. Fell off. So, yeah, bit injured now, so we ain't done much else. Well, that's a bit of a silly thing to do, riding on the asphalt when you, uh, this is, can be a little bit softer. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I, did, I did hear you've done a bit of track days. Um, what made you sort of get into that? I, I love it. I've been doing it for years, to be honest. I'm looking to try and race it next year as, um, as well as the grass track. So, yeah, just a bit of testing. Uh, we'll bring Wayne in. Uh, how are you feeling for today's meeting? you feeling yeah. confident? Yeah, pretty confident, pretty fit. I've had quite a bit more meetings than... Then Tom, I've been on the old and uh, new class, uh, Bantasia with Joe Mogg, a couple of them with him, qualifier I did with Joe, rode with Mark at um, Frittenden, so yeah, I'm just, uh, just trying to keep going really. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, are, you, are you feeling confident with today's meeting? Uh, how, how you think it's going to go? Uh, the way you're looking at it, it's, it's a it's a completely open class really it's, today. It's a free fall. Every, every, every race is going to be a final. It's an absolute um, free fall. So yeah. yeah, I think the luck luck is on whoever gets the gate really on some of the heats. It's going to be a gating day. I mean, the good thing is with this track, it's who's who's got. Uh, who's the bravest on the day really because there can be some wide lines Yeah, it's grippy, we like the grippy tracks the bike set up for this track always goes well down in Kent but like you say, you know, there's like 12 bikes I could pick out that could beat us equally we could beat them and the one it. to watch out for obviously is Mark but you know well, yeah, but it's one of those. Everyone has bad looks, so. Well, yeah, but you can you can never say it's going to be his beating. It could be anybody's beating, like you just said. Um, but yeah, I, sp I suppose your aim is to uh, try and get one over on your brother and see what happens. We're aiming to make the final. To be honest with you, yeah. I'm still heavily injured, so I don't know how my body's going to react throughout the day. I don't know if the track's going to rough up, but you know we're here. The bike's as best as it can be, so just hope for the best. That's it. Well, have a good day, lads, and stay safe and just enjoy today. Cheers, Thank you. Good. Cheers, mate. Right, I'm now here with uh, Mark Cossa and his passenger Gareth Williams. Um, Mark, you've won it six times so far. Um, that's quite an achievement. Yeah, it's been. We've had a, a good run. We've had a bad run at, uh, from the same point as well because we've had some that were taken from us which we should have won. But that's all in the past now. So we focus on today. That's it. And uh, Gareth, a couple of weeks ago you had to pull out. You weren't feeling too good at the meeting uh, at Freedom. Yeah. And uh, you, are you back? To yeah. Full I'm, Back to full fitness now, so yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, I see you was walking around the track just now. Does does it look good? Yeah, it I know they good. Want to prepare a good track. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice. And given the weather that they've had, they've put a lot of water down. It looks smooth. They've done a lot of work. They've done yeah, all credit to the club. Yeah, so I know you've done a lot of work on other people's bikes over the last few months. And yeah. uh, have you had time to do your one? Well, I found out Wednesday night that it was I bent the sidecar platform in the final last week. So it's been. Uh, completely stripped over two days and rebuilt. That's it. Are you uh, feeling confident today with yeah. them for a seventh title? Yeah, we'll give it our best shot. Yeah, you're in with a good shot, and so I think it's open field for everybody. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just wish you the best of luck today, and have, have a good day, stay safe, and enjoy your racing. Cheers, Cheers Kev. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Right, well, this uh, 2022, we're at the uh, GTSA Dig Dog Lane British Masters Championships. Uh, what a lovely day we've got, really. It's not too hot, we've got a bit of wind, um, the track looks exceptional. Uh, it's a very open field today, I think. Uh, we've been round, we've interviewed some of the solos and some of the uh, chairs, and uh, everybody's feeling confident going into this meeting. I'm not even going to think of who could go on the podium today. It's anybody's race. Every, every single race today is going to be a final. So uh, I think it's a very, very open meeting. I just hope the track stays well, it doesn't get too dusty, and everybody goes home safely. And I think the way things are, everybody's confident going into this meeting, and I just hope everybody has a great day. And uh, the way it's looking, I think it will be a great meeting. So uh, enjoy the video. I think you're all uh, virtually here. I'm going to make it short and sweet because you all know what you're doing anyway, else you, you wouldn't be here. We're all here to have a good time, and none of us want to have a bad time. So, uh, re regarding the rules and regulations, don't break the tapes. I don't want to exclude anyone for going outside pegs. I don't like to do that. So you, you all know what the score is. If, if any of you sort of take the mickey and keep going outside the pegs or get advantages, then you will be put back. But I really don't want to spoil anyone's day by excluding. Now, the riders rep is Sean Harvey. I'm sure you all know Sean, so if you feel that you've got a problem, please go and speak to Sean. Is there any other questions that you, you want to ask, or are you all quite happy with what we're doing? Are we going out in the heat practice? No, no, we've spoken about that because some people want to go out early to check their gear in and then check their other bike and maybe change it. Others like to wait until the track's been rowed a few times. So whenever you're ready, come up. I mean, we've only got 500 solos, right-handed sidecars and left-handers. Obviously, we wouldn't put left-handers out with right-handers, but any 500s that are in the pit box will go for practice, as will the 1,000 sidecars. So 
yeah, I think that's all pretty clear. So, um, all have a good day and may the best man win. Yeah, sorry, is the start going off the green light system? Are you going to do any start training or save? Because the, the actual grooves on the chair start on ain't very wide. Right. So no, I'm thinking I'll, save I'll, them if you can. Yeah, I'll, 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 save them, because otherwise we're going to end up with dirty great big ruts and nowhere else to kind of see. So you'd rather save them? I, I personally would, not other right. people would, yeah. I'll have a word with them. And Bro, we're still waiting on a bike. It's not due here till midday. Right. So we might need late practice. Okay. Well, we we cross that bridge yeah. when we come to we'll get there. right there. <laughs> <laughs>
no one, dear. Do you boys know him? I've never seen before, yeah. He remembers it. number 68. And I do believe they're going to ride this afternoon as the reserves Dan Berrett and Stephen Russell. Number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Wood. <laughs> Next to them is outfit number 25, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. <laughs> I was just looking for a 98 in the right handed cycle and realised that he's on the left handers. Of course, we are in Kent, where the home of the left handers, and we start with the current British champion, number 98, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. Colin Clark, the one two eight. Colin Clark. Colin Clark. Colin Clark. Colin Clark. Colin Clark. Colin Clark. Outfit number 16, Josh Benfold and Daniel Woodbridge. Number 125, I've seen him race many, many times. Number 125 is Billy Benfold and this afternoon Luke Stevens. Oh, 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 and another campaign I've seen many, many times down on these Kent circuits is number 96, Tommy Benfold and Terry Draper this afternoon. Outfit number 193, Steve North and Adrian North. Yeah,
Harris who leads as they go into that first turn. Zach Whiteneck follows them in in that second and James Wright's found his way into third. Paul Harry is on the wide line from the second and out of the back. This is a perfect start to his day. This is how he wanted the start of his defence to begin. He's out in front. Well, Gareth, I was talking to Chris earlier on at the presentation and he was saying about the amount of travel he's doing at the moment with all his speedway commitments. But he said he was 100% committed to ending this last episode. And look at the way he started. He comes round off that fifth end looking every bit of champion. Zach, no answer to him at the moment in second. Oh, Paul Hurry has got a battle there from that fourth place to try and get past uh, Chad in third place. But I think all eyes are going to be on Chris Harris and he now will be seeing the last lap back as he comes round past us this time. He really does look to be in absolutely tremendous form. Time to look over his shoulder and I bet he's surprised as well to see the gap that he's got to second place Zach. of the afternoon is going to be the chequered flag for the defending champion Chris Harris takes it Patrick Necker in second James Wright finishing in third and Paul Hurry fourth Wow, what a fantastic opening ride for Chris Harris he was absolutely faultless there in getting himself off the start and winning that race Jake Mulford further back had a poor start and had a lot of work to do, but here we go, we are compiling the results as we speak. So the official results are for race number one, sponsored by Dave's Commercials. It was a win for number 37, Chris Harris. Second place, number 109, Zach Pikeneck. Third place, number 169, James Wright. Fourth place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Fifth place, number 72, Jake Mulford. Sixth place, number 26, Luke Harris. And seventh place, number 25, Jason Prynne. The winning time, 1 minute 22.91. 1 minute 22.91. And obviously, there's a lot that's going to happen with this circuit as the afternoon goes on, but it'll be interesting to keep an eye on those times this afternoon. So, we move to race number two. And no Andrew Appleton in this one. It, we, he will be replaced by David Hollingsby, number five. And no Alfie Botelli that he's replaced by number seven, Nigel Coates. But we have got Martin Sturgeon, Gareth McMott, Jody Hodgson, Henry Atkins, Dave Mears, Nigel Coates and Chad Wurtzfeld. So here we go with race number two. Tapes up, away they go, and it's Martin Sturgeon who's made a good start. Henry Atkins has made a good start too. Chad Wurtzfeld finds himself on the outside of both of those riders as he sweeps into the turn. So Martin Sturgeon made a great start and he now leads down the back straight. And Dave Beers has moved his way into fourth ahead of Gareth Hickmore. So one lap gone, it's Martin Sturgeon who leads. Henry Atkins now, he's starting to get to grips with this circuit. He's hunting down Martin Sturgeon as he goes down that back straight. A great start for the Masters for the local rider, but Henry Atkins is all over the back of him now. Well, continuing on from that race one, we've got a great scrap going on in race two because you quite rightly say that this is a great ride from the start. Going out into the lead. Just about to change by the look of it, Marty Sturgeon has been caught by Henry Atkins as they go into the last lap. And Henry Atkins now takes over the lead into this bottom turn. He's looking very, very quick. Marty Sturgeon not able to hang on, and I just wonder if he's going to hold second as well. I think we're up that back straight. The gaps are starting to close, and we will see the checkered flag as they come round this time. So a terrific ride in race two for Henry Atkins. He gets the checkered flag first time out, close for second place. I'm sorry to say that I think that Martin Sturgeon may well have been caught on the line there, but we'll wait for the official result. So the results of race two, sponsored by Clive Salmon and Graham Marsh. It was a win for number 29, Henry Atkins. 
Second place, number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. Third place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. Fourth place, number 17, Gareth Hickmott. Fifth place, number 19, Dave Mears. Sixth place, number 7, Nigel Coates. Seventh place, number 53, Jodie Hodgson. And eighth place, number 5, David Hollingsby. 1 minute 28.50 was the winning time. 1 minute 28.50. And that's considerably different to race 1. Considerable difference in the uh, times there. So race number 3, there's no Kai Ward number 44 this time in gate number 5. His place is taken by Jordan Knoll number 95. But we should see Jack Roberts on the inside, Andrew Whitaker, Luke Tuck, Paul Cooper, Jordan Knoll, Aaron Butcher, Rodney McDonald and Stephen Green. Race number three, riders getting themselves ready here, certainly Paul Cooper, one to watch here in gate number four, he's been riding very, very well this year. So tapes up, away they go, it's quite an even break, Aaron Butcher, number 20, has made a good start, it is Aaron Butcher who leads into that first turn, Paul Cooper's got up the inside, Jack Roberts has dived up there as well, but it's Paul Cooper who now leads as they exit the turn, Aaron Butcher's much better than that, he takes over the lead. So Paul Cooper and Aaron Butcher going at it here, Butcher almost overcooks it in the middle of the turn, he's forced Paul Cooper very, very wide on that turn, but it's Butcher and Cooper absolutely going at it here, Paul Cooper's on that wide line, he's battling away on that wide line, it's very drivey out there in the dirt, and Stephen Green now sitting on turn for Jack Roberts for that third, so now Aaron Butcher's pulled off, and he's pulled off the circuit, what a shame for Aaron Butcher. His race is run. Oh, and indeed a shame for Aaron Butcher, such a great start, but you can see that Paul Cooper doesn't mind at all. He's taken over, and of course we've got to say Paul Cooper has been doing a lot of racing this year, and he's had a lot of success. We know he's already qualified for the European final later in the year, and he really is having a great season, and he won't mind this first start. He was forced in that first turn to uh, go for the inside line, I, for one, can't make up my mind which is the best line around this circuit at the moment. There does seem to be two or three different lines. Paul, Paul Cooper won't mind this as a start for the afternoon as he comes round for the chequered flag this time, and it's going to be a win in race three for Paul Cooper. Second to him is Stephen Green, but that was a terrific opening ride from Paul Cooper. So just the five finishes there in race three. Aaron Butcher sadly pulling off while very well placed and it looks like Luke Tuck fell off or, or certainly stopped at some point as well over on the top end. So good ride from Paul Cooper. So the results of race three sponsored by Rob and Lou. It was a win for number 11 Paul Cooper. Second place number 66 Stephen Green. Third place number 474 Jack Roberts. Fourth place number 171 Andrew Whitaker. And fifth place, number 95, Jordan Null. No other finishes in race three. The winning time, 1 minute 28.53. 1 minute 28.53. Relative newcomers to the sport, but going very well in their first Masters this afternoon. Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb, of course, former British Masters champion. I can see that Paul Whiteland is on a different machine as well as he comes out onto the circuit. That is the spare machine that he's riding there. So that's quite interesting. Not sure why he's changed machines there, but hopefully that won't hamper him too much. Trevor and Sam Heath in gate three, they've been going well this season as well. They had a problem at the qualifier, which meant that they had to rely on a wild card to get into this meeting. Dale and Jordan Fish out of gate four. Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey in gate five. And Matthew Mola and Andy Wilson off of gate six. So a good looking race to start off the sidecar competition, Jim. Well, it is, and indeed, I remember back to your meeting last weekend where Trevor Heath had a terrific final, so uh, don't write him off yet, because this one is a tough one to predict. It certainly is, and there's a lot of newcomers here who have uh, just picked up sidecar racing in the last few years and are very, very quick already, and hungry for success as well, particularly some of those riders that have been already winning meetings this season. 
But here we go with an intriguing looking race number four. They are on the start, they are ready to go. So, tapes up and away they go and it is an even break. Trevor Heath has made a good start but it's Matt Fumoli and Andy Wilson that have got their nose in the front. As they go into the turn, Matt Fumoli and Andy Wilson lead. Trevor Heath's in that second, Dale Fish has gone very hard on Robbie Simmons. All three outfits at the back have come together. So an interesting one-to-one -one pick at the back as all three of them have stopped. In fact, the red flags are out. Red flags are out, and that's probably the best decision there, I would suggest. So bikes have been restarted for the rerun of race number four. Great to know that all six outfits will be back on the line. It was a very even start. But uh, at the time, it seemed like Matthew Moroda and Andy Wilson had got away from the rest of the pack. Will they be able to do that again? It's always a lot of pressure at this point to try and do that again. Uh, it certainly is, Gareth, and indeed, I know that Matt uh, was telling me earlier on at the presentation that they actually blew an engine up um, on Tuesday, getting it out for a practice run, and they're very pleased that it, although it meant a lot of work for the rest of the week to try and rebuild the engine, Please, it happened then and not today. So uh, I'm sure he would have been very pleased with the start that he just had and most certainly will be trying to replicate it once again. Yeah, of course, lots of these riders, they, uh, they don't have factories or anything doing their repairs. They all do it themselves in the garages. There's no factory team behind them, so a busy week for Matt Fumarola and he will be hoping that it will pay off today. So here we go, it tapes up and once again, Matt Fumarola's made a great start off against six. They're all together up the inside with Michael Austin. It's the rider having a look up in second. Paul Whitelam is in that fourth, pushing Trevor Heath along as they go in this first turn. It's a great start for Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. He has got Michael Austin and Vinnie Barge all over the back of him as they come past us. Trevor Heath and Sam Heath dive into that turn up the inside. So once again there are two lines forming up on that top corner. Trevor Heath is off to the inside there as he goes once again up the inside of Michael Austin in that second and third. So now Michael Austin is running wide but he's allowed Trevor Heath a lot of space up the inside of him as they go past us. Well again Gareth I don't know what was happening at the back but you can see at the back of the field you've got Robbie Simmons who's missed the start completely. He's begun to catch up with the field. We wonder how long this race is going to be for him to make his way through. But while all that's going on at the back, we know that we've got a comfortable lead. Andy looks over his shoulder, looks to see the cap he's got as a scrap is developing for that second place. And we can see a change made. But Matt from Mola won't mind at all. Well, they're battling for that second place. And it is two outfits together as they go into this bottom turn. And Matt will see the checker flag this time. That will please him and his pit crew as they come round towards the checker flag. Who's won this battle for second? Oh, that is indeed Trevor Heath and uh, Sam Heath that have got that second place. A terrific sidecar race. Quite what happened to Robbie Simmons on the line, I do not know. Whether he had it in the wrong gear or something. But he completely missed the start and then had to make up ground for the rest of the race. So a great race to get the right-hand sidecar competition up and running this afternoon. It was a win for number 15, Matt Fumarone and Andy Wilson. Second place, number 171, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Third place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Fourth place, number 9, Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey. Fifth place, number 20, Dale and Jordan Fish. And sixth place, number 92, Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb. 1 minute 20.75 was the winning time. 1 minute 20.75. And seeing Paul Whiteland at the back there, obviously, that new machine takes a bit of getting used to. And uh, hopefully we'll see Paul getting better as the afternoon goes on because he really is a very strong competitor. And to see him at the back like that, not the ideal start for the former champion. So we move to race number five. And we've got a change of passenger in this one. Mick Stace is number 18, is passenger by Dylan Newton. So the uh, yellow and orange bike, you can see that the rider on the back is all in black. That is Dylan Newton. And we've got Neil Owen and Jason Farwell, who looked quick in practice. Caleb Wills and Terry Maidley. 
in this one, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, Clint Blondell and Jordan Smith, and the other wild card in this meeting, another former champion, Rob Bradley, and his passenger, Ryan Wharton. Very much looking forward to seeing how Rob goes this afternoon. So the last of the riders to come into line, Caleb Wills and Terry Maidley. So Terry Saunters up of gate four has been making some tremendous starts this season. If he ever needed starts to happen, today is the day. And of course we saw that brilliant start off of gate six for Matt Fumarola in the last heat. Can Rob Bradley replicate that this time? So it looks like Caleb Wills has gone through the tapes. So that's a real shame there. You can see Caleb Wills making his way back to the pits. As in Speedway, you can't go touching the tapes and can't break the tapes once they're on starter's orders. So that's a real shame for his day to start that way. I can see that Terry Saunters has left passenger Liam Brown over on the start doing some, uh, doing some preparation to that rut making sure the rut is ready so that they can make an absolutely brilliant start. They have been making good starts all season. That's been one of their calling cards this season. So it looks like the remaining five outfits have got themselves ready over there on the start. So race number five. Tapes up, away they go, and it is Terry Saunters who makes a brilliant start from the middle of the gate. Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, they lead going into the first turn. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell are up the inside of Rob Bradley, and Rob Bradley's moved Terry Saunters over slightly, but Terry Saunters is there, he's in front. Rob Bradley's in that second place, Neil Owen in third. Clint Blondell is the rider in fourth at the moment, but this is a good start from Terry Saunters. But he's got Rob Bradley all over the back of him. And as I say that, Rob Bradley loses a bit of traction to banking and allows Terry Saunters to get away. So a great start from Terry Saunders, but this race has got a lot of action left in it, I would suggest. Neil Owen is now all over the back of Rob Bradley. I agree with you, Gareth, because I'm watching that third place, that V-twin. It's got a lot of power and indeed it's fast down that back straight. So will Rob Bradley be able to hold off and stay in that second spot? Because while all that's going on for second and third, you can see that Terry Saunders has had just the start he wanted. Liam Brown working hard on the back of Terry Saunders. As they go around that pit bend for the third.
good time and they'll be seeing the chequered flag this time as they come round and off that final bend it looks like it's going to stay as it is. Neil Owen not able to do anything from that third spot but the chequered flag definitely goes for a win for Terry Saunters. Rob Bradley picks up a good second place and for his first outing this afternoon Neil Owen's got to be content with that third. So the results of race five. It was a win for number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Second place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Wharton. Third place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Fourth place, number 18, Mick Stace and Dylan Newton. And fifth place, number 10, Clint Blondell and Jordan Smith. The winning time, slightly faster than the first one, 1 minute 20.16. 1 minute 20. Point one six, And now we go to race number six and it's very difficult to talk about the sidecar competition without talking about the dominance of Mark Costa and I know that uh, riders have come and gone Jim with uh, Gary Jackson, John Holsey is here today, Roger Misa of course but Mark's dominated for such a long time and it's hard to see where it'll ever end. Oh, you're absolutely right, Gareth. And, of course, one name you didn't mention was uh, taking the British Masters title for a long time with Steve Smith, of course. And, um, you know, we, we always say that when we look back to those sort of 80s, 90s, you know, it was a strong competition. But I still think it's just as strong now. And although it does look like Mark Cossa will be able to defend his title, he's been very quick this season... And he's picked up a lot of wins already. You never know at the Masters. You never, never know. And uh, he'll certainly want to make sure that he gets a win in this first ride, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we've seen it go wrong before for Mark at the big at this meeting. So we know that uh, it's certainly not game, set and match from race one. There's plenty of competition in this one. Will Offen and Ricky pay off of gate one with that uh, brand new front end on that machine. Still getting used to things on that machine, but looked very quick at Frittenden two weeks ago. Tom Costa and Wayne Rickards, of course, third last year. Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh, who had a tremendous final with Mark Costa at the Dalton Barracks Bonanza earlier in the year. And, of course, Kieran Hicks with new passenger Frankie Courtney off of that favourable gate six. So, tapes go up, away they go. It's an even break, but it does look like Mark Costa and Gareth Williams lead as they go into the first turn. Colin Blackburn's there with him. And it's Tom Costa who settles into that third place. So Mark Costa returns the bike hard. Keeps it up the inside. Colin Blackburn's got no answer to him. Tom Costa finds himself on the green grass. Covering much less ground than Colin Blackburn. Tom Costa's all over the back of Colin Blackburn for that second. And it is Tom Costa that gets through. But Blackburn comes back in down that back straight. Then neck and neck as they go back into the top corner. So the race here is for second because Tom Costa is all over Colin Blackburn. And as they come past us, it looks like Costa's just got his nose in front. Well, indeed, that was a fantastic ride for Tom Cosser in that second spot. I was saying earlier about the different lines that there are around these corners. And Tom Cosser decided to go very, very wide and keep it on the hill as he went round by the pits. And he's got himself now comfortably into that second place. Can he close down on the early leader, Mark Cosser? But as the field starts to get strung out, you can see that Mark Cossa is doing exactly what he wanted to do for his first ride this afternoon. Comes into the last bend, very much in control, looks over his shoulder, knows he's got it, takes the chequered flag, and that's exactly what they want for their first ride this afternoon. Good ride for Tom Cossa in second place and Colin Blackbourne in third. the results of race six we were very eagerly listening out for the time it was a win for number 37 Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams second place number 29 Tom Cossa and Wayne Rickards third place number 25 Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh fourth place number 80 Will Offen and Ricky Pay fifth place number 78 Kieran Hicks and Frankie Courtney 
And sixth place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Stephen Russell, of course. The additions coming in place of number 124, George Penfold. The winning time, 1 minute 18.78. 1 minute 18.78. So, more or less two seconds quicker than that time in race four. And about half a second quicker than the time in race five. So, there's a lot of work to do in the pits to catch up with the reigning champion. Yeah, I've just seen on the far side there, Gareth, that we've got the water valves are coming out to uh, try and keep the dust levels down. So uh, they'll hopefully just fly around the circuit the once, and we will be back with the uh, left-hand sidecars. Race 7 in your programme, sponsored by DR Lockhurst, the Butchers. with this left-hand left sidecar support this afternoon. Of course, they're not racing for the British Masters title. They had their British Championships two weeks ago, and that race meeting was won by outfit number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips, who are the uh, outfit that are in gate two here, although somebody else looks like they've gone in their gate at the moment, so I think there's a little bit of unpicking to do up there. But a uh, great win from Michael and Tim Phillips. It was a um, a race that was stopped after three laps, and, but they'd uh, more or less had the race won by then. And we've got a couple of passenger changes of course here. Steve North is passengered by Adrian North off of gate one, and Tommy Penfeld is teaming up with Terry Draper, who I think the only other time Terry rode was at the British Masters two years ago in 2019. Uh, three years ago would have been now, wouldn't it? And uh, they won the meeting, Terry, uh, Tommy and Terry. So. At the moment he's got a 100% track record and I would imagine he'll probably want to keep that going this afternoon. So away we go, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge have certainly made the best start off the outside. It is outfit number 16 who leads into the turn. Michael and Tim Phillips are there in second. And it's Martin Cuff who is working his way round the outside of Michael Phillips. Tony Penfold goes up the inside as well. So Michael Phillips goes back back on Tony Penfold, the race is on for third and fourth at the moment. Josh Penfold has made a great start at the front, but Martin Cuff now is starting to build up the steam, build up the power in that single cylinder engine. He's going to start to try and mount a challenge around the outside. He's covering an awful lot more ground than Josh Penfold, the rider in second, but he's a lot faster and you can see he's a lot faster down the back straight. So back into the quick corner, Josh Penfold has got a lot of work to do here to keep Martin Cuff and Colin Clark at bay, they come off the bank and as he got him this time, he's gone right round the outside. And now Martin Cuff leads. Uh, a tremendous start to this afternoon's racing with the left-hand side cars. Hard work there for Martin Cuff. He took the decision to go wide, and indeed it looks as if he's going to stay wide. He obviously turned up the circuit around this uh, afternoon. And disappointing for Josh Penfold that he's now got the battle for second place uh, to contend with. That terrific start, and Josh really has stayed on a very, very tight line. Michael Phillips now putting pressure on him, and Michael Phillips, I think, has decided to follow the Martin Cuff line and go much wider. It does mean that they're quicker going up the back straight. I just wonder if that gap is just a little bit too much now that uh, the early leader, Josh Penfold, is going to hang on to second, but no doubt about the winner. The win goes to Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Josh Penfold and Daniel Woodbridge finishing in second.
So we're just eagerly anticipating what's going to happen with outfit number 96 and uh, problems throughout that race and uh, not currently competing, completing enough of the race distance to be classified. So I don't know if anyone wants to signal to Tommy Penfold. He could do with coming round and passing the checkered flag, but he's gone back to the pits. So it was a win for number 128, Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Second place, number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Third place, number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. Fourth place, number 25, Tony Penfold and Kelvin Parks Easton. Fifth place, number 193, Steve North and Adrian North. And sixth place, number 96. Oh, sorry, there's no sixth place. No sixth place. No 96, I've written it in. No 96. The winning time is 1 minute 45 exactly. 1 minute 45 exactly. So, back to the Masters and the 500 Solo, sponsored by Dave Commercials. And what a lineup we've got here. Jake Mulford, who had a poor start first time. Chad Wurtstad, Martin Sturgeon. Henry Atkins, who won his opening ride. Jack Roberts and Andrew Whitaker, away they go. And once again, Martin Sturgeon's made a great start. Jake Mulford's made a much better start this time. And it's Henry Atkins who's there as well. All three of them are together in the turn. Henry Atkins is the rider that's emerged in front. Sturgeon's on the wide side, running in well the outside speed on the outside line but Henry Atkins leads this is a good start from Henry Atkins Jake Mulford has opted for that inside line as they come off this turn he's now going to put Martin Sturgeon under a tremendous amount of pressure in fact Jake Mulford's gone through in that second place so Martin Sturgeon now is relegated to third but Henry Atkins at the front looking good once again looking exceptional as he goes around that turn he has certainly got his gating gloves on this afternoon and he looks very fast well, he has, Gareth, and indeed he looks very, very quick indeed. As you rightly say, he had a win first time out, looking to make it two out of two. But I uh, do wonder what's happening with Martin Sturgeon. He is making the best of the start and then being caught by the riders, and you can see he's slowly dropping down through the field. But no problem for Henry Atkins. And Jake Mulford sitting there in second. Jake has started to close that gap, actually. There's a big, big gap between second and third. But all eyes on those front two as Jake tries to go to the outside line round the pit bend. And in towards the checkered flag. It's going to be close on this line. And I would say that he's done it. Well, we wait for official confirmation. But Jake Mulford, a terrific last turn. He looked very, very quick up that back straight. Decided to go the long way round. And I think he's just about done enough. So a great end to 500 solo race, race number eight. It was a win for number 72, Jake Mulford, right on the line. Second place, number 29, Henry Atkins. Third place, number 69, Chad Wurtzfeld. Fourth place, number 474, Jack Roberts. Fifth place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. And sixth place, number five, David Hollingsby. The reserve coming in, of course, for Andrew Appleton. The winning time, 1 minute 24.72. 1 minute 24.72. So, Jake Mulford, he almost seemed to kick it off a gear halfway through that race, and suddenly he was on terms of Henry Atkins. Went into that banking and it's just exactly what Jim's been talking about. These different lines around both of these corners. And Jake Mulford finding a very quick line around the outside. So race nine, we've got Mokai Ward, number 44 in this one. His place taken by number 95, Jordan Noll. And I can see that Jordan is already set, ready to go on gate number one. But we have got Paul Cooper in this one, who won his opening ride. We've got Zach Weitneck, who finished second in his opening ride. We've got Paul Hurry who finished fourth in his opening ride. And we should have Alan Butcher as well who was well placed when he pulled off the circuit. He's, he's there in gate three so we have got Alan Butcher. So another very strong looking line up here in race number nine. the outside, Zach Weitneck's on the inside is the two of them that go into that first turn Zach Weitneck takes up the lead Aaron Butcher's gone up the inside but he's quickly overtaken by Paul Hurry round the outside so Zach Weitneck, he's the way he is, followed 
by Paul Horry, who's much better placed this time. Aaron Butcher's looking good in that third. Paul Cooper has found himself in fourth, so he was an opening ride winner. And he's now way back in fourth place with an awful lot of work to do to try and get on terms with these leaders. So, Zach right now. Second place, first time out to Chris Harris was able to do this. But as Zach played around with that setup, he certainly looks quicker in this one. Oh, you're right, Gareth. This is exactly what we're going to have to look for as the race uh, goes on during the afternoon because can they make changes that give them that extra couple of seconds? Because Zach certainly looks a lot quicker in this one than first ride. Paul Hurry equally so. But um, on form. Not so good from Paul Cooper. Sitting back in that fourth place. No answer to everybody in front of him. Aaron Butcher still hanging on to that third spot. But Paul Cooper... Gaps between first, second, and third. Paul Cooper is getting closer all the time for that third place. As we see the second bag this time, that's a terrific ride from Zach as he takes the win. Paul Cooper in second, <laughs> Paul Hurry indeed in second, and Aaron Butcher in third. Paul Cooper, in fact, has to work, be content with a fourth place. The results of race nine, sponsored by Poppy and Jacob Noakes. It was a win for number 109, Zach Frankneck. Second place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Third place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Fourth place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Fifth place, number 17, Gareth Hickmott. Sixth place, number 19, Dave Mears. Seventh place, number 25, Jason Quinn. And eighth place, number 95, Jordan Knoll. The winning time... 1 minute 23.35 1 minute 23.35 so we've now seen five different winners in this competition and we did say it was open at the start and uh, Chris Harris now comes into this race and he could remain the only rider on a maximum if he can pop out the start and win this one Number 10, sponsored by Foster Kolkoff, is on the start, ready to go. And tapes go off, away they go. And looking for Chris Harris, James Wright's made a good start as well, but it is Chris Harris who leads into the first turn. James Wright's right on his shoulder though, as they go into that turn. Stephen Green's the rider in third, ahead of Luke Harris at the moment. Chris Harris, nobody else has managed to maintain the maximum. And he could be the only rider after two legs. Still with a maximum. James Wright at the moment in that second place, riding well, but he's got no answer to Chris Harris, the defending champion, looking very, very determined this afternoon. Stephen Green looking good in that third place ahead of Luke Harris as well. determined ride from Chris Harris. Certainly taking this meeting by the scruff of the neck. Well, I think you've put it in a nutshell there, Gareth, because he is certainly stamping his authority on this solo class at the moment. An excellent ride in his first ride, and he's followed it with another excellent ride in his second outing. And really, nobody's got an answer to him at the moment. As always, we'll have a look at the time when he finishes, but you can see that James Wright who had a third first time out, has tried to stay with Chris, but it's just not been possible. He really does look to have the measure of this circuit. And we see the checker flag being repaired. That's going to be two out of two for Chris Harris, the defending champion, of course. He takes the win. James Wright improves on his early third place to a second, and Stephen Green going from second to third. So the results of race 
10, sponsored by Foster Colcraft. It was a win for number 37, Chris Harris. Second place, number 169, James Wright. Third place, number 66, Stephen Green. Fourth, number 26, Luke Harris. Fifth place, number 7, Nigel Coates. Sixth place, number 89, Luke Tuck. And seventh place, number 53, Jodie Hodgson. The winning time, 1 minute 24.56. 1 minute 24.56. So, back to the sidecar class, race number 11. And we have got Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams coming into this one. And we've also got outfit number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown as well. So, two first heat winners coming together in this one. And they will be off of gates 1 and 2. So, of course, this will be all about getting yourself enough points to get into that top six. And then anything can happen in that final. And at the moment, of course, there's several riders after only one heat, several riders who are quite a way down on the points after disappointing opening rides. I can see that Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb have reverted back to their own outfit for this one. So you might recall that they came out on a spare machine in their opening ride and had a very disappointing ride, but they are back on their own bike this time, so perhaps there was a problem that they just couldn't quite get sorted for that opening ride. They've certainly sorted it now. So Costa and Williams off of gate number one this time. So tapes up, away they go, and off the outside, Paul Whitelam's made a much better start. Terry Saunders has made a good start as well as we go into this first turn. So it's Terry Saunders who leads, Paul Whitelam's in that second, Mark Costa comes in hard. As they come into the turn, it's Terry Saunders that leads, but Mark Costa's up the inside, and Mark Costa has got up the inside of Terry Saunders already as they go into this split turn. And that was a remarkable first half a lap for Mark Costa, and Paul Whitelam's now moved through into that second as well. So Terry as well. So a disastrous lap and a half for outfit number 24, but Mark Cossa, what a brilliant start from the defending champion. Well, I think I'd say, Gareth, it wasn't so much of a brilliant start. It was a poor start from Mark, but didn't he make a brilliant first turn? He worked hard, he kept it tight, he's worked his way through, and after that early lead from Terry Saunders, he's now got to battle it down further in the field. And Terry's not giving up by any chalk. You can see that Paul Whitelam is holding that second, but Terry has got much, much closer to him. But what can you say about our reigning champion? Mark Crosser, very determined mood at the moment. He had a lot of good wins already this season, and he knew that he would be in the best of preparation for this afternoon. Oh, just keeping my eyes on that second spot as they go across the line, but I think Paul Whitelam did manage to hang on to it. So the results of race 11 are very, very impressive. First lap from number 37, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. They maintain their maximum. They take the win. Second place, number 92, Paul Whiteman and Richard Webb. Third place, number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Fourth place, number 9, Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey. Fifth place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. And sixth place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Brunch. The winning time, 1 minute 18.94. 1 minute 18.94. Yeah, lots of talk in here about uh, the engineering expertise of Mark Costa. We just cannot believe how easily he breezed past the pack, coming past us. Fabulous ride from the reigning champion. And it really does mean 
who is going to stop him this afternoon. But we've got race 12, sponsored by Rob and Lou on the line, and we've got Matt Fimarola and Andy Wilson in this one. They had a win in the opening ride. Tom Cosser and Wayne Ricards had a second to Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams in their opening ride. And Neil Owen and Jason Farwell have looked very fast as well. So, plenty to sort out in this one. Will Matt Fimarola be able to maintain the pressure on Mark Cosser and go two wins out of two as well. He can is the only rider that can do that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens in this one. Race number 12. So, tapes up, away we go. Tom Costa and Wayne Rickards have made a great start. You can see that Tom is clunking the machine. Matthew Marone is very determined in that first turn. Here's Matthew Marone and Andy Wilson that are pushing the issue on the inside and they lead. Two outfits come together at the back. Clint Brundell coming together with Neil Owen at the back and the red flags are out. And Tom Costa and Matt Fimola look like they were about to have a very good race there, but unfortunately at the back, a problem between outfit number 10 and number on the top corner who doesn't look too good either so the medical staff do what they can with uh, both Jason and Jordan they're certainly in good hands here He had a second first time out as well. So, some riders well in amongst the points in this one. So, race number 13, we will have no George Penfold and Danny Hill in gate number 6. So, the riders getting themselves into position over on the back straight. Caleb Wills, the last to come in line in that gate number two. So the revs rise, the tapes go up, away they go. Rob Bradley's lifted off the start. And it's Colin Blackburn who leads as they go down the back straight into the first turn. Trevor Heath's there on the outside of him. Rob Bradley's made up back up to third. So Colin Blackburn is running wide. He's run Trevor Heath wide. It's very close. They come past us. Rob Bradley's made up a whole load of ground in that first turn. But Colin Blackburn leads. Trevor Heath now has allowed Rob Bradley up the inside. But it is quick round the outside. And Trevor Heath has just got his nose ahead as they go back into this top corner. So Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh leading the way Rob Bradley's very hard on Trevor Heath in the middle of the corner and now Trevor Heath is on the back of Colin Blackburn so it's all to race for here Colin Blackburn has slowed in that first place he stops Trevor Heath from running up the inside of him Oh Gareth I was just watching that closely because Trevor Heath was uh, I think got to do some thinking here because Colin, as you quite rightly mentioned, is holding that very tight line. He slows in the middle of the bend. So I think it's going to be down to Trevor to make a decision. Is he going to go wide? Is he going to keep the power on? But you can see he's following him into the bend at the moment. He's trying to get even tighter than Colin coming out of this bend. And they get close as they go up past us and the uh, checker flag is out. And not quite enough for Trevor Heath and a good ride once again from Colin Blackburn.
So race 13, remember, not race 12, race 13. Uh, and the result was a win for number 25, Colin Blackbourne and Carl Pugh. Second place, number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Third place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Wharton. Fourth place, number 78, Kieran Hicks and Frankie Courtney. Fifth place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Stephen Russell. And sixth place, number 31, Caleb Wills and Terry Madeley, Terry Mudley. The winning time, 1 minute 20.72, 1 minute 20.72. And once again, Jim, this first corner providing a little bit of drama. More bikes coming together. Well, indeed, Gareth, and uh, I think it's fascinating, actually, because that back straight does look very, very quick. But if you look from, really, where that marshal is over on the far side, there seems to be a long lead-in, and then all of a sudden it tightens up. And I think that's where the problems are, because if, if the bend was like the top bend, where you can make a clear decision, do I stay on the inside or do I go for the faster mid-stroke outside line? But... I think this bottom bend is really catching them out. And, of course, when they're racing against each other from the start, they're all so, so quick in what I'm seeing is that second segment of the corner. So, yeah, fascinating as the afternoon goes on to see who's make the best of it. Of course, the easy answer is get off the start, get in front, and stay in front. <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. Yeah, we'll definitely be uh, keeping a good eye on this first corner because we've already seen three or four incidents in there. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'm just keeping my eye to see if Neil Owen is making his way onto the second. He's in gate one, and it's almost... It is possible that Neil Owen is behind that hay bale from where we're sat, but I can't really make him out. So the situation, as we understand it, is that uh, Neil Owen is currently uh, without a passenger uh, in the pit box, and Clint Blondell, his passengers, actually suffered concussion. So he can't take part either. The rules around concussion are extremely strict, as you'd uh, expect. So we've got passenger problems. You'll remember that incident in the first running of race 12, where the riders came together. So I think we may be going without uh, Neil Owen and without Clint Bondar. That's exactly what's happened. As only four outfits leave the start, it is Matt Fimo over there. He goes past Tom Costa on that back straight. It's Matt Fimo and Andy Wilson lead. Tom Cross has opted for that outside line as they come past us. Matt Fimarino there, he looks home and dry here. He's looking very good in this one. Dale Fish and Mick Stace are battling over that third and fourth. But that was a commanding first turn from Matt Fimarino and Andy Wilson. Back down into that top corner. And Tom Cross at the moment looks like he's got no answer to them. Well, a terrific start once again from Matt Fimarino and Andy Wilson. Tom Crosser, you will remember back in his uh, first ride, he had to work hard to get through, but he really has no answer to Matt from over at the moment. To remind you that they've rebuilt this engine just back into the week. It looks to be absolutely flying. One more lap to go then for Matt from Roller to make it two out of two. Tom Cross is trying to change things. Well, it looks like Delfish has won that battle for third place. But all eyes on the far side as Tom Crosser has definitely got closer. Can that front roller hold it together as he goes round that last turn? He'll be in towards the checker flag this time. He's decided to keep it tight. Tom's gone wide. And there's problems. Matt front roller pulls out. Tom Crosser goes on the outside of him and takes the checker flag. It does mean that Matt front roller will get that second. But disappointment. We hope it's nothing too terminal. But I can see from Andy's expressions, I think there is something rather serious going on. Although the engine does seem to be going. Well, all the mechanics will rush towards that bike now to find out what went wrong. But it definitely cut out coming out of this bottom bend. He looked like he was slowing a little bit the lap before. And uh, I don't know what could be the problem there. It was definitely not going right by the time it got back down to us. But as you said, Jim, it did pull him back to the pit. So the machine is still running. So hopefully nothing too terminal because he still gets second. So the official results of race 12, it was a win for number 29, Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards. Second place, number 15, Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. Third place, number 20, Dale and Jordan Fish. And fourth place, number 18, Mick Stace and Dylan Newton. 1 minute 20.22 was the winning time. 1 minute 
2-2. So if we look at those winning times, you can see that quite clearly the fastest was the race 11 time. We've got a bit more water coming onto the circuit before we have race 14 coming onto the circuit, which will be the left-hand sidecars once again. Tapes up, away they go, Martin Cuff's made a brilliant start off of gate six, he's leading as they come past us by a considerable margin, Rob Heath and Kyle Fisher in that second, Josh Penfold's in third and Michael Phillips is in that fourth at the moment, but that was a great start from Martin Cuff and Colin Clark, first time around they did make a good start and had to work hard through the pack, but this time they're there and Michael Phillips is looking quick in that third place, he's going to try and go around the outside of Rob Heath on the pit corner, but Martin Cuff and Colin Clark here looking home and dry. Michael Phillips is looking quick in that third place. He's now going very wide to try and go round the outside of the two outfits in front of him. They're squabbling over second, third and fourth. They're all together at the end of the turn. Michael Phillips has just got a wheel in front as they go back into the big corner. So great racing for second, third and fourth at the moment. Uh, I think you're right, Gareth. That is exactly where all the racing is because Martin Cuff has set a cracking pace and got away, but I wouldn't say that this second, third and fourth is decided yet. You can see just going in on a very tight line, Josh Penfold has got himself in there. But watch Martin Phillips, Michael Phillips going around the outside. He looks very quick coming off that bottom turn. But these three outfits together, we're just going to have to let Martin Cuff go because he goes into his last lap leading quite considerably. But Josh Penfold on the inside of uh, Michael Phillips. Those two now pulling away a little bit from number 18, Bob Heath. But still nothing decided between those two as they go up the back straight almost together. You can see a front ball just getting in front of them. Josh Penfold has got that uh, lead as it goes into the middle of the bend. And they come down towards the checker flag. Martin Cup takes it. But the best of that second place is taken by Josh Penfold and Daniel Woodbridge. So a fabulous race 14 there, the race for second really was great, but it was a win, a very clear win for number 128 Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Second place, number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Third place, number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. Fourth place, number 18, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. Fifth place, number 96, Tommy Penfold and Terry Draper. And sixth place, number 125, Billy Penfold and Luke Stevens. Winning time, 1 minute 44.87. 1 minute 44.87. And we turn our attention back to the British Masters Championships for today. Race 15. Sponsored by Ivor Matthews, is a name you're very familiar with, Jim. Ivor Matthews, 93, British champion. Well, indeed it is, and indeed I've been wandering around. I've been seeing quite a few old faces from uh, years gone by, shall we say, when uh, this really was uh, perhaps a different sport. I don't know whether I should say that, but um, just talking to a few colleagues there a moment ago, we were saying about how we used to perhaps race in the West Country or in the Southern Centre and you wouldn't see anybody else until you went to the National Championships and we had a North and a South qualifier that you'd come across people you hadn't seen and wonder why they were so quick. But, you know, it's all changed over the years, no matter whether we're in Cornwall, 
up in uh, Lincolnshire, across in the Midlands, wherever we are, we see typically the same riders. Fantastic stuff. Here we go then with race 15, and it's Zach Weitnick and Henry Atkins who have made the best as they come past us. Zach Weitnick leads. Aaron Butch is plugging away up the inside as they go into the turn. So Henry Atkins has been left on the outside. Aaron Butch has turned to my card in that third place. Zach Brightneck, he's got a comfortable lead here. He won his second ride, of course. This will do very nicely. Harry Atkins does look quick in that second place. Quick enough to hold Aaron Butcher at bay. Stephen Green in that fourth, holding Jack Roberts. Back in fifth at the moment. So, Zach Brightneck at the moment, looking good once again. He's only been beaten by Chris Harris so far this afternoon. And this will be a second win out of three for him. Well, indeed, Gareth piling the points on at the moment, as we can see, sitting in that second spot is the very, very quick Henry Atkins, but he's got no answer for Zach at the moment, as Zach really has gone away and wants to stamp his authority on this one. As you quite rightly say, he had a win second time out, he's only been beaten by Chris Harris in that very first ride this afternoon, and with one more lap to go, Zach is going to make it uh, very, very good on the point scoring, because Two wins in a second, looking like certainly making the semi-finals. We shouldn't ride off Henry Atkins either, he had some very good rides earlier on. I think he's just deciding that second will do him in this one, and he crosses the line in that second place. Third spot going to rider number 20, Aaron Butcher. Results of race 15. It was a win for number 109, Zach Breitneck. Second place, number 29, Henry Atkins. Third place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Fourth place, number 474, Jack Roberts. Fifth place, number 66, Stephen Green. Sixth place, number 95, Jordan Knoll. And seventh place, number 53, Jody Hodgson. The winning time, 1 minute 24.50. 1 minute 24.50. And we've got race 16 coming onto the line, sponsored by Dave's Commercials. No Charlie Powell, of course, in gate two. We've got no Alfie Botel in gate four, his place being taken by rider number seven, Nigel Coates. And we've got Paul Cooper in this one off of gate eight, and he has had a win first time out. And then a disappointing fourth in his second ride. Jake Mulford had a win in his second ride. So two previous heat winners and of course the very quick starting Martin Sturgeon as well. So tapes up and it is those three that emerge off the start. Jake Mulford's got his nose in front as they go into the turn though. He gets to dictate this first turn. Jake Mulford leads them. Paul Cooper in that second place. Martin Sturgeon is in third ahead of Jake Mulford in that third. So Jake Mulford, this often happens to Jake Mulford, he does seem to get quicker as the day goes on, Paul Cooper's gone extremely wide and struggled to keep the machine in, he's gone very wide on that top corner. So Jake Mulford, number 72, a great young rider of course, signed for Belgium recently in the Premier League and he's going for the strength of strength, but he's looking good in this one. Well, indeed he is, Gareth, and indeed he's setting a cracking pace. It'll be interesting to see what sort of time he puts on this one, because he doesn't look to be letting up whatsoever. Paul Cooper establishing that second spot in front of Martin Sturgeon in third. But I think this one is going to be a case of looking at what sort of time he puts up, because we know, as you've just said a moment ago, he gets quicker as the day goes on, and he's looking at making this one his. Paul Cooper... Always there fighting. Martin Sturgeon, who's had some good rides this afternoon. He's certainly been getting off the start. He holds that third place in front of Jason Green. But as the checker flag is made ready, a very convincing win for rider number 72, Jake Moore. So results of race 16, it was a win, it was a win for number 72, Jake Mulford. So 
results of race 16, it was a win for number 72, Jake Mulford. Second place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Third place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. Fourth place, number 25, Jason Prynne. Fifth place, number 7, Nigel Coates. Sixth place, number 89, Luke Tuck. And the winner's time, 1 minute 24.03, 124.03, so very comparable with race 15. We've already got race 17 coming onto the line. No Andrew Appleton, of course. His place taken by David Hollingsby. And the riders are ready for race 17. Will Chris Harris make it three out of three here as the tapes go up? It is Chris Harris who is there or thereabouts. James Wright's up the inside of him. And they're together as they go into the turn, but it's Chris Harris who leads. James Wright's in that second. Paul Harry's worked his way through to third. And Chad Wright's the rider in fourth. So Chris Harris, so far, so good for him. He has not been bested yet. Paul Harry is sent wide in the top corner. And that's allowed James Wright to get away a little bit in that second place. So Chris Harris taking a different line to James Wright going into this top corner. He's much, much wider than James Wright. Makes two different racing lines. At the moment, I'll pay dividends for Chris Harris. But this is looking good for the defending champion. Oh, looking good, good indeed, Gareth, because you can see that Chris Harris has really stamped his authority on it. James Wright trying everything he possibly can. He goes much, much wider on that one. Uh, and I'm interested to see that uh, Paul Harry certainly hasn't lost his attention with him at the moment. But James Wright looking and testing to see whether he can find the advantage somewhere on the circuit. But Chris Harris has got a lovely line around this bottom turn. And he gets a very, very quick line going up the back straight. He's absolutely on it. And there's going to be a checkered flag for him this time to make it three out of three as he comes off that top turn. Well, credit to James Wright. He tried everything he possibly could, but he's going to have to be content with the second place. Poor Hurry in third. It means that our reigning British champion is maintaining that winning ratio of three out of three. So the results of race 17, it's 3 out of 3 for number 37, Chris Harris. Second place, number 169, James Wright. Third place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Fourth place, number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. Fifth place, number 17, Gareth Pickmott. Sixth place, number 19, Dave Mears. Seventh place, number 26, Luke Harris. And eighth place, number 5, David Hollingsby. Winner's time, fastest of the leg, 1 minute 23.69, 1 minute 23.69. So, Chris Harris, the only rider to have gone through the card unbeaten so far. That's two wins for Jake Mulford, two for Zach Weitneck as well. And we've got Neil Owen coming onto the circuit with Terry Madley. So, we know that uh, Jason Farwell hurt his leg earlier and Jim had a word with him, but that's Terry Madley on the back of Neil Owen. These two have ridden together. Once or twice, certainly I remember at Collins Street they had a ride together. That was a few years ago. Await race 18. The right hand side cars. We have got no 124, George Penfold and Danny Hill. Their place being taken, of course, by the reserves. Dan Berwick, number 68, and his passenger Stephen Russell. And we do know that Jordan Smith will not be in the chair of Clint Blondell, so we wait and see what's going to happen there because Jordan, uh, unfortunately, banging his head and suffering a concussion earlier in the meeting. So we do have Terry Saunters and Liam Brown who are currently sitting fourth on the points overall. We've also got Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb who had a very good second ride. We've got Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards who currently sit third 
on in the points overall. And Will Offen and Ricky Pay have certainly not been too far behind either. So plenty to sort out in this race 18. So the riders, the outfits are in line for race 18 here. Some of the top point scorers going head to head in this one. But I would suggest Paul Whitelam is desperate for points here in gate number four. So, tapes up, away they go once again. Terry Saunters and Liam Brown have leapt down that back straight. They lead going into this first turn. Tom Crosser and Paul Whiteley were together in that second and third. Tom Crosser's opted to go round the outside. Terry Saunters is holding them up on the inside. Crosser's gone right round the outside. And he's just got his nose in front, but Terry Saunters has got enough to keep him up the inside. They're absolutely together as they come off that turn. Tom Crosser's got a very quick outside line, but Terry Saunters... We've got two different racing lines here being produced and it's producing some fantastic racing between these two outfits. Oh, you're not wrong there, Gareth, because look at Tom Crosser now. He's trying to hold it tight on this top bend now because he's, done, he's got around the outside of Terry and he's now going to try and hold a tight line to make sure that Terry can't sneak through on the inside of him. So he closes in but all the time that's going on, don't write off Paul Whitelum. He's watching what's going on in front of him. He knows those two are trying to play a tactical game and uh, close the door, if you like. But Paul Whitelum doesn't look to have quite the speed that he used to have earlier on in the season because he's lost on that fast rate and allowed those two to get away from him. Checker flag goes and Tom Cross is going to take his second win of the afternoon as Terry Van Terry has to settle for that second place. And Paul Whitelam in a third. So the official result of race 18, it was a win for number 29, Tom Crosser and Wayne Rickards. Second place, number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Third place, number 92, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. Fourth place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. And fifth place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Stephen Russell. The winning time, 1 minute 19.50. 1 minute 19.50, a quick time. Not the quickest that we've seen, but certainly a quick time. And we now move to race 19, sponsored by Dave's Commercials. And we have got, we are thinking it's going to be Terry Madley on the back of Neil Owen. So that's what we assume. We've, of course, got Colin Blackburn here in gate number six. And Colin currently lies fifth on the points overall, so he is well in amongst it. Trevor and Sam Heath currently lie sixth as well, so a couple of riders that are well within the points here. Neil Owen isn't too far away, wasn't too far away in his opening ride with that third, and then, of course, a disaster in that second ride, but he comes back out this time. So just trying to work out what the delay is. There's uh, all six outfits are out there and uh, now they seem to be making their way uh, to the line. But uh, lots of the riders opting to keep moving around and not go to the line straight away. So the revs are rising, so the tapes go up, away they go, and Colin Blackburn's made a good start, Michael Austin's made a good start as well, Trevor Heath is very quick in that second portion of that state as well, but it's Colin Blackburn who leads, Neil Owen is now going very wide around the outside, Trevor Heath decided to turn up the inside of Michael Austin, gets himself into second, there's three of them together as they come past us for third, fourth and fifth. So, Michael Austin in that third place, and he's quickly now under pressure from Neil Owen, who gets a little bit lost, going down the back straight. But Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh, this is more like it from their legs, stamping their authority on this one. Oh, really good to see that Colin's got the bike going well now, because he... Uh, Always has been a strong competitor in the Masters, and it's good to see that he's going to get that win that he's been fighting for all afternoon. Well, I shouldn't preempt things really because we've got one more lap to go. 
and this is a good good ride once again for Michael Austin as he sits in that second place. Temple flag being made ready for them. Remind you, this is their third leg ride. So the points really now starting to get uh, sorted out and separated, but Colin Blackpool on gets maximum. Michael Austin finishes in second and Trevor Heath finishing in third. So the results of race 19, it was a win for number 25, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. Second place, number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Third place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Fourth place, number 20, Dale and Jordan Fish. And fifth place, number 12, Neil Owen and uh, Terry Mudley, the change of passenger there. 1 minute 20.22 is the winning time, 1 minute 20.22. So, yeah, our lap scorer noticed that the uh, race 12 time was exactly the same. So this is the second time we've seen 1 minute 20.22. That's unusual. So we move to race 20 then. And we have got, once again, Mark Costa and Gareth Williams out of gate number three. Chris Harris, of course, is very much successfully defending his Masters title by winning three races. Is Mark Costa going to do the same here? Well, he's got Matthew Morella and Andy Wilson out with him. Of course, they had that problem in their last ride. So I'm just looking over to see if Matt Fumarola, and indeed I can see now Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson coming onto the circuit. So for a moment I was worried that they had a problem that was uh, more terminal than perhaps we initially thought, but they are on the circuit. They've had a win in a second so far, so we are well in amongst the points. And not forgetting, of course, uh, Gareth, that they were winning that race when uh, it seemed... I don't know, there was a hesitation. There was, I don't know whether it's something... All we can hope for is that it was something simple that they managed to get resolved. Well, they've come to the line here, so all, of the, all the signs point to the fact that they've got the machine running and hopefully running on all four cylinders again. And they will, of course, have Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams to contend with in this one. Of course, they are currently lying second, Matt Fumerol and Andy Wilson, so there wasn't too much harm done by that mechanical problem. Rob Bradley, of course, is in amongst the points as well. He's in seventh at the moment, so he's running amongst it too. So plenty to race for here in race 20 as the tapes go up. Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams have made a great start. Robbie Simmons has made a good start this time as well in that second. Rob Bradley finds himself in third and Matthew Roller's out in fourth. So it is Mark Cosser once again at the front. Rob Bradley's now trying to get up the inside. All three outfits are together as they come past us. Once again, it's Rob Bradley that gets himself into that second. Matt Fumarola has got up the inside of Robbie Simmons. He now gets into third. Robbie Simmons now goes back past him down the back straight. So this race, the second, third and fourth, really hotting up here in this one. Oh, you're not wrong there, Gareth, because it is all about that second, third and fourth, because Mark Cosser has once again stamped his authority on things and he's got away from them. There's a real battle for that second, third and fourth. Robbie Simmons has got the work to do. He's back in that fourth place and closes in on Matt Von Roller in third. Rob Bradley holding second at the moment, desperately trying to make sure of it. And he knows that Mark Cosser is getting away from him all the time. And Matt Van Roller, whatever that problem was, it looks to be so. Is that bike as quick as it was earlier on this afternoon? Oh, we'll see the checkered flag this time come round, and uh, last year's Masters champions make it three out of three. Rob Bradley gets a good second place, Matt Van Roller in third, and Robbie Simmons in fourth. So the results of race 20 sponsored by Darren Wills. It was a win for number 37, Mark Cosser. 
and Gareth Williams. Second place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Walton. Third place, number 15, Matthew Marola and Andy Wilson. Fourth place, number 9, Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey. Fifth place, number 18, Mick Stace and change of passenger for him, Dylan Newton. And sixth place, number 31, Caleb Wills and Terry Madley. The winning time, 1 minute 18.43, 118.43, so still a couple of seconds quicker than the other heats. We've got a little bit of water going onto the circuit once again. It really has been a day of dominating performances because Martin Cuff has dominated this class and we've seen, of course, Chris Harris and Mark Costa and Gareth Williams doing the same in the Masters competition. So here we go, we have race 21 and Martin Cuff has made a good start. Michael Phillips has made an excellent start there and it is the reigning British champion that leads into the first turn. Michael and Tim Phillips, but Martin Cuff is already looking for a way around the outside as they exit that first turn. So Michael Phillips just ahead of the moment from Martin Cuff. And Martin Cuff's going to pop away on the outside line. So into the pit corner and now Martin Cuff, he rides much wider, much faster in the middle of the corner and he's got his nose in front. So Martin Cuff once again gets himself to the front here. Michael Phillips at the moment will have no answer to him. Steve North's got himself up into that third place there. But Martin Cuff certainly of a wide, fast line on a big corner. He leads once again here in this third race of the left-hand side cars. Well, indeed, Gareth, he leads, and indeed, that's exactly what he's done all afternoon. He's uh, certainly stamping his authority on this one, and this will be his third ride. And as I mentioned earlier, with the left-hand side cars, they all get three rides. So, we won't Martin Cuff in that last ride. He'll be able to sit back in that big box and know what the other rider is going to try and catch him. But um, the British champion, Michael Phillips, had a good go to start with. But he's having to sit there in that second place now. And third place, Steve North. Quite a few gaps now opened up, but let's not take it away from Martin Clark. He's uh, rode superbly this afternoon. He knows he's got to sit and watch that last ride, but he knows he's done everything he possibly could to make sure he's in the final. As he takes the win, Michael Phillips finishes in second, and Steve North finishes in third. So the results of race 21, the left-hand sidecar, sponsored by Dave's Commercials. It was a win for number 128, Martin Cuff. Second, number 98, Michael Phillips. And Tim Phillips. Third place, number 193, Steve North and Adrian North. And fourth place, number 125, Billy Penfold and Luke Stevens. The winning time, 1 minute 45.40. 145.40. Well, indeed, they're working hard up there in the pit box because they've got the riders out for race 22 in your programme. Of course, we move to the fourth leg of the solo competition. And uh, looking at uh, the riders going in race 22, James Wright has got quicker as the afternoon's gone on. Martin Sturgeon has been very quick off the start line. No Alfie Botel, of course, in this one. Jake Mulford, who had a win last time out in his third ride, Sure, he'll be looking to make the best of it this time. Oh, the starter's bringing them up to the tapes. And away we go with this race 22. We're into the fourth leg rides. And Martin Sturgeon once again has made a very good start. He's gone very wide and he's let number 169 James right through. And James Wright it is that takes over the front. You can see Martin Sturgeon going wide once again. And he chases after James Wright as he goes up into that pit turn. But James Wright, who we know has looked very, very quick all afternoon, looks like he's going to get his first win. Martin Sturgeon in second. Trying to close down on that second place is number 72, Jake Mulford, who finds a way through on the inside. Jake Mulford it is, just into that second spot. Oh, he's wondering if he's good enough to catch James Wright. He's gone very, very wide.
wide. And James Wright very much in control. And Martin Sturgeon now has been picked off once again by Chad Whitfeld. Chad has got himself into that third spot. Into this bottom turn they go. Will he take a wider line? Will he try and get the speed up the back straight? Joel, Jack Mulford is looking to do that as he goes outside of James Wright going up the back straight. And as those two, you can see that Jack Mulford has gone through and gone very, very wide. It means that the checkered flag goes for the early leader, James Wright. But that was a terrific effort from number 72, Jake, Jake Mulford. Interesting race 22 and uh, points dropped there for Jake Mulford but points gained for James Wright. Number 169, he takes the win. Second place to number 72, Jake Mulford. Third place, number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. Fourth place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. And fifth place, number 19, Dave Mears. No other finishes in that one. The winning time, 1 minute 24.90, 1 minute 24.90. And James Wright gets his first win of the afternoon. So, a good ride from him. And that will certainly get him up in amongst the points. So, as we move on through the programme, we've got to race 23. We're still with the fourth leg rides for the solos. If they've been doing the arithmetic in the pits, they'll know whether they've got to produce something for this last ride. But of course, going in this one, we've got our early leader, Chris Harris, our defending champion. He's had three rides and three wins. Can he make it four out of four and go into that semi-final in a commanding position? To try and stop him, we've got Paul Cooper. And not ignoring Henry Atkins as well. Oh, they come to the line. Starter obviously not happy with something at the moment, but he's now got them all in line. And we get underway, looking for Chris Harris. He's coming from the middle of the start, and he gets to the front. Paul Cooper has gone with him. So it is Chris Harris that leads going into that first turn. Paul Cooper is back in third spot at the moment. got this machinery sorted out for this afternoon and Henry Atkins trying to chase him down Paul Cooper still there in that third Number 11, Paul Cooper. 
Fourth place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Fifth place, number 474, Jack Roberts. Sixth place, number 17, Gareth Hickmott. Seventh place, number 89, Luke Tuck. And eighth place, number five, David Hollingsby. 1 minute 23.53 was the winning time. 1 minute 23.53, another very quick time from Chris Bomber Harris. Oh, uh, indeed, Gareth, you can say a very quick time, but uh, he really has looked the whole package this afternoon. And uh, I was just thinking back to when I spoke to our guests here this afternoon, John Horsey and Jason Glennie. I pushed Jason for a prediction, and then, of course, he did say that uh, it was going to be Mark Costa for the sidecars, and it was going to be Chris Harris for the solos. Very brave man to predict it that early in the afternoon, but it looks to be coming true at the moment. We know we've got a long way to go yet, and we're still with the fourth leg of the 500cc solos. The next time you see the solos out, it will be in those semi-final places. And uh, race 24, we see uh, Zach out for his fourth ride. And interestingly, that Chris, who's finished now, will finish and go into that first semi. If Zach scores well again and stays in second, he'll go in the second semi-final. And he has indeed got off that start well, and it's Zach Vicknick that goes into that first turn. Paul Hurry is there in second place, but he's not having it all his own way at the moment. He makes the best of his own. Going up the back straight in second spot, but it is Zach Vicknick that comes off that fifth end. Leading, as he's done earlier on this afternoon, and he commands that position in front as they come down past us for the second time. So is that right neck looking very impressive in keeping that pressure on Chris Harris, of course. He will be in second place here, but how he still looks fast in that second though. The riders in third, fourth and fifth having a tremendous battle between themselves. Luke Harris currently leading that one, but Jason Prynne and Stephen Green really are all over the back of him, making sure that he's having to work extra hard to cling on to that third place. So, as we turn our attention to the top end, it's going to be that right there. It's going to take the first win of the afternoon. Number 109 takes the win. Oh, one more lap to go. <laughs> And Stephen Green has now got himself on terms with Luke Harris for that third. So Stephen Green has been working very, very hard in that third and fourth place. Zach Reichneck is going to take a convincing win here and Paul Hurry is going to finish second. But that third place is still up for grabs. Stephen Green's now forced his way through to third. It's a chase to the line. It's just about Stephen Green from Luke Harris. And Jason Prynne finishes off the top five. So the results of race 24, it was a win for number 109, Zach Feigneck. Second place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Third place, number 66, Stephen Green. Fourth place, number 26, Luke Harris. Fifth place, number 25, Jason Prynne. And sixth place, number 95, Jordan Knoll. 1 minute 24.81 was the winning time. 1 minute 24.81. So, good to see that the uh, natural water system has worked well. I saw a couple of drops of rain just now, just making sure we're keeping that dust down. Great of the club to organise that for us this afternoon. So, we go back to the sidecars, and this is a very interesting competition at the moment. Certainly, Mark Cross is dominating, but there are plenty of other battles throughout the pack for the rest of the places. Oh, you're absolutely spot on, Gareth. It is the fact that they've got to get themselves into those semi-finals, score well in the semi-finals and get themselves into the big, big final. You're right that we've got um, Chris Harris dominating the solo event and we've got Mark Cosser dominating the sidecar event, but we won't see Mark until... Let's have a look. We've got race... 26 but for the moment race 25 is all about point scoring for riders such as Paul Whitelam, Colin Blackbourne and Rob Bradley because uh, Colin Blackbourne sits in third place at the moment on 18 points after three rides Rob Bradley on 14 points so he needs good points in this one and Paul Whitelam just below on 10 points 
So a good ride here would get him certainly into the semi-final, and a good ride in the semi-final will get him into that top six. So the crew's coming into line, the starters organise them into the uh, proper starting gate positions. They all look to be in those positions. As we look across that far side, I'm waiting for the starter to move away. He now moves to the back. Up go the tapes and we get underway. Who's made the best of those starts? Looks to be Colin Blackburn. Uh -huh. uh, they sort themselves out as they come into that first turn, but with problems with Paul Wideland pulling off into the centre of the circuit, I was looking for him, but Colin Blackburn won't mind. Will Offen is sitting there in second place. And Colin Blackwell won't mind this at all. He knows that if he can score well in this one, he'll certainly get himself into that semi-final. And he looks to be doing everything right at the moment. This is a good ride from Will Offen and Ricky Payne in that second place at the moment. Taking points off of Rob Bradley. And Rob Bradley is desperate for points as well. Currently sitting in seventh overall. He needs to get himself some good points. And he'll be desperate to get past Will Offen for that second place. Yeah. But at the moment, Colin Blackmore and Carl Key looking very, very good once again as they come round that top corner. Will Offen's drifted wide. I think he's allowed Rob Bradley up the inside. He's certainly given him a great big bit of space up the inside, but he's just about hold on to that second place. Now Rob Bradley's gone high into the banking. He's going to try and get a big one down the back straight. But Will Offen looks like he's got enough speed as we go into this turn. He's got to keep the machine tight this time, Will Offen. He cannot allow Rob Bradley up the inside. Colin Blackburn takes the win and Will Offen looks like he's going to cling on to this second place. Rob Bradley finishes third and Mick stays fourth. So the results of race 25, it was a win for number 25, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. Second place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Third place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Wharton. And fourth place, number 18, Mick Stace and Dylan Newton. 1 minute 20.56 was the winning time. 1 minute 20.56. And that does certainly secure Colin's place towards the top of the points table. And I think it's fair to say, Gareth, that with that time he's just put up in that race, he's got quicker as the afternoon's gone on. A very comparable time. Biggest disappointment for me, though, is to see that Paul Whiteland is off in the centre green. It does look as if they've got terminal problems with that bike. So we won't be seeing them for the rest of the afternoon, I don't think. But uh, let's not take our attention away from the riders that we have got going, because... Number 15, Matt Prumbo and Andy Wilson. They sit in fourth place overall after three legs, scoring 16 points from those three rides. And they certainly did have a, a hiccup, shall we say, that they uh, lost power and got themselves with a second place finish. Well, there's certainly lots of discussions going on around Paul Whiteland's bike. Well, I don't know whether it's because of the rain shower, but they seem very reluctant to get themselves onto that start line, or whether there's somebody still not got machinery going in the pit box. And we do think it's Kieran Hicks that is still on that uh, entrance to the pit box. Oh, we're just remembering back that Kieran Hicks did have problems in his last ride. He couldn't get off the start line and he had to follow the field around. And looking at his passenger at the moment, it does look as if he's gone back into the pits. So the rest of the riders will be called in. They'll get themselves to the start line. A reminder that Neil Owen is passengered by Terry Madley. 
due to the injury earlier on of Jason. So a rather depleted field, but uh, a chance to see in action once again our maximum point scorer Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams. I just wonder if they will emulate Chris Harris in the solo class to uh, make it four out of four. There's all frantic action going on. Machinery and passenger look to be over on the start line. Oh, and there goes Kieran. <laughs> so that's it. The heartbeat is going to be bouncing through his chest as he gets to uh, get on that start line. Anxiously look across to that start line. Who's going to make the best of it? Into that first turn, who else would it be? But Mark Costa has made an excellent start from the outside of the gate, and he's got himself into the front. There's a good scrap going on for second, and Matt from Roller has come through on the inside of Neil Owen. So Matt from Roller has got into a good point scoring position in second spot. Neil Owen is now being passed in that third place as well. But as they come round past me for the second time, it is Mark Cosser who's set maximum points so far this afternoon. Maintains that. Yeah, and it's getting interesting with this rain as well. Also, the goggles are getting wet with the rain and the dust is sticking to the goggles. I can see a lot of the riders frantically trying to grab a tear off so that they can see where they're going. The mixture of dust and rain is never a nice one at all. So lots to deal with here, but no problems like that for Mark Crosser and Gareth Williams, of course, where they are currently. Michael Austin has got himself into that third, and it's Matthew Moreira slowing. It looks like Matthew Moreira slowing again in that second place. So more problems for outfit number 15 as he slows dramatically once again. So Mark Costa and Gareth Williams are going to take fourth win of the afternoon. They take the win, they maintain the maximum. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch finish second. Neil Owen finishes third ahead of Kieran Hicks and Dan Barrick. But once again, problems from Matthew Morella and they're going to push around. They've almost completed all the race distance, so they're going to push around to pick up that final point. So problems once again for Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. They really have been plagued with it this afternoon. They've been riding so, so well all afternoon. And to see them in this situation once again really is quite devastating. Well, as always, Gareth, with this crowd that we've got here at the uh, British Masters, encouraging Matt Fumarola to get the points. He knows how valuable these few points could be. Pleased to say the pit crew have come down to meet them at the finishing line, so hopefully they can uh, take the bike back for them. And once again we say we hope it's nothing too terminal, we hope it's um, something very simple that they can get resolved. And you can see the effect he's had on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been working on the bike all week. He must be absolutely gutted that uh, things aren't going to plan mechanically, given how much time he spent in the garage this week. And hopefully he'll move. I think he is off the track, so that's fine. But uh, hopefully that point will be enough uh, to see them into the semi-finals, but certainly not how they would want to go about things at all. So the results of race 26, it was a win for number 37, Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams. Second place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Third place, number 12, Neil Owen and Terry Madley. Fourth place, number 78, Kieran Hicks and Frankie Courtney. Fifth place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Stephen Russell. And sixth place there to number 15, Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. 1 minute 19.28 was the winning time. 1 minute 19.28. So race 27 is onto the circuit. And I will give you, Andy, over to Jim to talk through this race 27. Uh, thanks, Gareth. And it's a chance to see um, 
in this position, riders looking to actually consolidate some points to get into the semi-finals. And I do expect this one to be a close four thing because Tom Cosser is sitting behind Mark on second place after three rides. But Trevor Heath has had some good rides. He's on 16 points from three rides. Terry Saunters has got 16 points from three rides. So they all must know that they've uh, got a chance of certainly getting themselves into that semi-final with just what really should be a consolidating ride in this one. Yeah. And of course we're just looking down that point schedule and uh, you can't write off at this stage riders like Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey. They're on nine points from three rides, so big points in this one could get them certainly into that semi-final. It's not so much. It's not so good when it's time to leave and everyone's already over there in their cars. We, but we get out when we get out, don't we? I'm not. I'm not going to get anxious about fucking like, leaving. We just. Yeah, but if you're like that, the two or three races before the end, you're already starting to not enjoy yourself because yeah, you're anxious so that, about, yeah. you can't enjoy it. Fucking pushing it out like that. Oh, the tapes go up and we get underway. We've got one crew that's been left on the line, but as they go down that back straight, that looks to me like that Terry Saunders has got himself into the front as he goes in that first turn. This is where it closes up. This is where it gets tight. Who's made the best of it? Tom Cosser. Tom Cosser gets through on the inside. Robbie Simmons is still sitting there in that third place. But I mentioned that it would probably be a very strong battle in this one. But Tom Cosser is really making it here as he goes into that bottom turn for the second time. So a good ride this from Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards who were able to get up the inside of Terry Saunders but at the moment Robbie Simmons is putting Terry Saunders under tremendous pressure for his third place, for his second place and Trevor Heath isn't too far away either so it's very tight still for second, third and fourth and now Trevor Heath is attacking Robbie Simmons for that third so nobody's safe at the moment, there's one more lap to go and Robbie Simmons has got Trevor Heath up the inside of him as they go into this turn and Trevor Heath throws the machine in Goes straight past the front of him and Robbie Simmons comes back at him as they come off that turn. Brilliant racing and at the front, Terry Saunders has caught up with Tom Cosser. So racing in two different places here as I try and split my eyes. Tom Cosser rides a great last turn. He takes the win. Rob Wilson, Terry Saunders second. Robbie Simmons third. Kerry fourth and I even put Rob Wilson back on the outfit for a minute then. Brilliant racing from the four outfits at the front. So a brilliant ride from all four of those competitors there, but the win was number 29, Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards, a great win for them. Second place, number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Third place, number 9, Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey. Fourth place, number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. And fifth place, number 20, Dale and Jordan Fish. The winning time, 1 minute 19.75. 1 minute 19.75 and you can see that the left hand side cars are already making their way onto the circuit for their fourth leg rides. Oh they are indeed Gareth and uh, if you haven't looked at the programme after this left hand side car this will be the last of the qualifying rides, the end of the fourth leg rides. There will be, as it's said in the programme, an interval. So if you're looking to get food or drink or whatever, then just one more race to go. Um, during that break, obviously, we'll consolidate with the lap scorers who's done what, who goes into those semi-finals. And before the end of the interval, we'll be able to give you who exactly has qualified or what position they're in. But before all that, we've got the left-hand side cars. And as I mentioned earlier, Martin Cuff, who uh, has had three wins, doesn't go in this one, so he can just sit in the pits and watch what everybody else is doing. Go up and the tapes go up. 
up and away we go with this the last of the left hand side car qualifying rides and getting an early start is number 16 that is of course Josh Penfold and Daniel Woodbridge but they're under pressure in that first turn forced to go wide and you can see that it is the best of it. the ones that broke down who were standing in, the, big, oh, the two big fellas. Who Tom now there. trying to hold a very tight line to make sure nobody comes underneath him as he comes around that pit bend. So a good first turn for Tony Penfold at the front, but Josh Penfold at the moment is going back towards Steve North. I can see the riders in third and fourth are starting to draw Josh Penfold in. Penfold looking much quicker this time as he starts to mount a challenge on Steve North on the outside in the pit corner. No doubt about the leader at the moment though. Looking very good in this one. No, it's getting close with his second, third and fourth. Steve North's up the inside. Tommy Penfold's watching carefully to see where everybody's going to end up, where which line people are going to take. Back down into this pit corner then. There'll be one more lap to go after this time. And at the moment, Tony Penfold is looking very good for this win. Josh Penfold. Josh Penfold in second is Tom Penfold in the lead. Josh Penfold in second is Steve North in that third. Still working hard in that third place, still trying to find a way past Josh Penfold. But it's, there's no doubt about the winner, it's a great win for Tom Penfold, number 25. Josh Penfold finishes second ahead of Steve North in third. Tommy Penfold fourth. And Billy Penfold fifth. They're all Penfolds apart from Steve North. <laughs> <laughs> so the results of race 28 the left hand side car sponsored by DR Luckhurst Butchers it was a win for number 25 Tom Penfold and Calvin Parks Easton second place number 16 Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge third place number 193 Steve North and Adrian North fourth place number 96 Tommy Penfold and Terry Draper and fifth place number 125 Billy Penfold and Luke Stevens. 1 minute 44.84 was the winning time. 1 minute 44.84 from 2021. That of course is Chris Harris. Now you heard uh, during the interval that the riders were out there picking their gate positions. I hope we remembered what they picked and uh, get themselves in the right positions. So they're waiting for the starter to move away. I think we have all our competitors there. Just remind you of the points position because it is points scored in this semi final that add on to their running total and get them into the final. But the tapes go up and we get underway. Who's made the best of it is, of course, Chris Harris has got to the front. Number 72 is Jake Mulford that's got into that second spot. Those two starting to break away a little bit and we've got four of them on that first bend in that third and fourth place. So the red flag is indeed coming out on that top bend because we've got machinery and riders but looking across the far side there I can see that both riders look to be up on their feet and look to be okay. we haven't given you yet is the left-hand sidecar qualifiers and uh, that's in your program the race 33 competitors are number 128 that's Martin Cuff 16 Josh Penfold 98 Miley Phillips 25 Tom Penfold 
193 Steve North and 125 Billy Penfold. The reserve is, if needed, the reserve is number 96, which for the life of me I can't remember, is, uh, is Tommy Penfold. We uh, sit here and discuss what's happening with this rain, but who knows what it's going to do to that racing circuit. And indeed, I can see one rider that looks like uh, Jake Mulford just sliding the back wheel out, showing everybody that that is going to be a very, very slippy event. Underway, Chris has made a very good start once again. He gets himself to the front. Now, what are they going to find when they get into this first turn? Chris puts it sideways, a very experienced rider, of course, and he makes nothing of those conditions. And as they go up the back straight, it is our uh, leader of the competition so far, leading once again, and he's making these conditions look absolutely no problem whatsoever. Well, I've seen that Stephen Green had gone up there, he's in third place at the moment, but it is James Wright that's in that second spot, and Gareth, the gaps have started to open. Yeah, lots of the wrong... Yeah, lots of the riders finding their way through these new conditions here, but Chris Harris is certainly making a mockery of the conditions here. In fact, oh, he's fallen, just as Harris. I say that, he's fallen. Now, that's the commentator's curse, if ever I've seen it. Aaron Butcher's made his way through to second, so this is good points for Aaron Butcher. The yellow flags are up, which means that Chris Harris is going to remount. So, drama here, just as we were seeing how well Chris Harris was going. The last lap flag is out, and James Wright has now inherited this lead. Aaron Butcher is going very, very wide into that top corner to try and find a dry line. In fact, they're all going right out to the outside flags to try and find a bit of dry land. So the checker flag is made ready and it's going to be a win for James Wright, number 169. He takes the win in this first semi-final. Aaron Butcher finished second. Stephen Green's fallen now in that third place, which means Jason Prynne now takes over the third. Ahead of Gareth Hickmott in fourth, Chad Wurtzfeld fifth. Jake Mulford will pick up sixth there. And I think that's all the finishes we've got. Oh, indeed it is. And uh, we were talking about the conditions. And who would have expected that to happen? But now the arithmetic starts, because we've mentioned all through the afternoon, it's about point scoring through the day. And uh, I'm looking over my shoulder to see what the point scorers make of it. And with 36 points coming into this semi-final, we could still be seeing Chris Harris out in that final. So the results of race 29, the Fire and Solo first semi-final, it was a win for number 169, James Wright. Second place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Third place, number 25, Jason Prynne. Fourth place, number 17, Gareth Hickmott. Fifth place, number 69, Chad Wurtzfeld. And sixth place, number 72, Jake Mulford. No 7th or 8th finisher. The time, 1 minute 38.06, 1.38.06. So that, uh, that downpour has caused a 14 second delay with these riders. They are 14 seconds slower over four laps. So that is a, uh, a disaster for Chris Harris, but uh, hopefully not too much of a disaster because we are looking at the points, Jim, and he's still up there with 36, so I don't think it will harm him too much. Yeah, come this way. 
Uh, we certainly hope so, Gareth, and uh, I'm sure he, amongst everybody, was very, very disappointed with doing that, but we hope there's no serious damage to the machine. It's now being taken back to the pits. So you can see this time they're having a sighting lap, and uh, obviously didn't have a sighting lap in the first one, but this time all of the riders having a good look at things. I never know how much they learn from doing this though really. It's not till you get to the corner in anger that you know what's going to happen. Yeah, you're absolutely spot on Gareth. It's always fascinated me over the years that they ride round at uh, almost walking pace. And uh, although I, I will say you see one or two of them give it a little bit of throttle and see how much the back wheel is actually spinning. So, I don't know, maybe they do learn something from it. Difficult to see when you're standing up in the pit box what it's like down on that bottom corner, I guess. heating up. I don't think this, uh, these conditions are going to last too long. I think it's going to dry very, very quickly here. So um, it'll be interesting to see how quickly the riders can adapt to conditions as we move forward here. It's a bit of a, an interesting curveball at this point, I think, Jim, really. Well, it is, Gareth. And I'm looking at the riders in this second semi-final, and I'm just wondering now whether, um, you know, Zach, of course, is sitting on 34 points. He knows that Chris has finished on 36 points. So what it could mean is that the riders in the second semi-final, now have seen what's gone on, could get better choice of gates in that final. So uh, we will see, as they say. But for the moment, we concentrate on second semi-final. And away we go with this second semi-final and off that start goes Zach Picknick. Martin Sturgeon who's been making good starts all day is still there as well. He's in second place at the moment but as they all sweep around that first bend you can see Martin Sturgeon is head down going up the back straight and he looks to take the lead. Well he's gone very very wide. Hopefully there's some dry dirt out there that's giving him the drive. But Zach Vicknick has really got a challenge on this time. Paul Hurry has come up the inside of them both though as he gets into that bottom turn and Paul Hurry is now in second spot. Martin is on that outside line, still on the wide line. So it's all happening at the front of this second semi-final. You can see the two different lines being taken by Paul Horry and Martin Sergio and Paul's plugging away on that inside line and there is a very narrow dry line on the inside and at the moment Paul's making great use of that inside line and he's pulling back on the back. Martin Sturgeon now has fallen going into the turn so his challenge is over but at the front there's one more lap to go. Zach Feinek is racing in the middle of the circuit, Paul Horry plugging away right on the inside, right on that dry line. Henry Atkins is in third, nice and secure as well, but at the front, Zach Feinek looking good now, he's managed to get himself a little bit of comfort between himself and Paul Horry. As they come round this bend for the final time, it's going to be a win for Zach Feinek, he takes the second semi-final, which means he leads going into the final. Paul Horry second, Henry Atkins third, fourth place to Paul Cooper. So these times are very interesting here, just how quickly this circuit is drying. But the results of the second semi-final, it was a win for number 109, Zach Weichneck. Second place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Third, number 29, Henry Atkins. Fourth place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Fifth place, number 474, Jack Roberts. Sixth place, number 19, Dave Mears. Seventh place, number 26, Luke Harris. 
and 8th place number 15, Martin Sturgeon. 1 minute 27.63 is the winning time, so very, very quickly the circuit is dried. And uh, you can see there that uh, very quickly the riders were getting comfortable with things, so uh, ever-evolving circuit. Oh, ever-evolving indeed, and we now move to the sidecar semi-finals. And uh, it looks like uh, Matt Trambola, is he on a different machine? No, he isn't. Um, oh yeah, right. Well, it does look as if Matt Van Roll has got a different passenger, but... Oh, he jumps off. They do it to uh, confuse us, Jim. Yeah, they, and, they, and it's working. <laughs> Well, Matt's in the second semi-final, so he's not in the first semi-final. Um, <laughs> I think he's just been told. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the wrong race and the wrong passenger. <laughs> but he did have the right bike. So. so, a quick reminder then of who we have got in this first semi-final. We've got our maximum point scorer, unbeaten so far this afternoon, Mark Cosser. Uh, joined on the line by Terry Saunters, Trevor Heath, and uh, we've got 991, that's of course the, uh, the outfit of uh, Michael Austin. Number 80 is Will Offen, and number 18, uh, Mick Stace. remember during the interval that um, Gareth went up there on the start line and witnessed where they were choosing their starting gates. I can't honestly say that during the afternoon I've noticed any particular difference with the starting positions. We've had winners from the outside gates, we've had winners from the inside gates, but I don't know, when you were up there Gareth, did you notice anything different with the soil? Not particularly, they were all pretty straight and uh, yeah, good, uh, good launches from all six of them really, so yeah, nothing really. And it is a very long way to go to that first turn as they get underway. Made a terrible start. As we get into that first turn, is it as we would have expected? No, it isn't, because Terry Saunders has actually come off that bend and uh, got the lead. But just coming through on the inside of him, Mark Cosser is in third place at the moment, so all three of those outfits together. But you can see that it is outfit 991. 191 is Trevor Heath. And all three of them together, but Mark Costa is now starting to work his way through. And has he got himself to the front? You can see that Terry Saunders has taken the dry dirt on the inside. And well, Gareth, it's all happening in this first semi-final. What a fantastic cycle race this is. Mark Costa's going up the bank, and again he goes right round the outside of Terry Saunders. But Terry's coming back in as he goes into that turn. A fantastic cycle race this. Mark Costa slowing the machine on that inside. He's trying to hold it tight. Trevor Heath trying to hold it even tighter in that third place. One more lap to go. I think Mark Hossam now has got himself a little bit of space, but a fabulous couple of laps. Mark Hossam was able to go round one of the riders, up the inside of the other rider, switching lines mid-corner. And round he comes, he's certainly been made to work hard for this one in that semi-final. It's going to be another win for Mark Hossam. Trevor Heath's come through for that second. A great ride by Trevor Heath to come through for second, ahead of Terry Saunters in third. Fabulous sidecar racing. Yep. Tremendous racing in this semi-final, but once again, the all-conquering Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams, they are still yet to be beaten. So a tremendous sidecar semi-final. The winner though, there's only one winner of course, and it was number 37, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. Second place, number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Third place, number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Fourth place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Fifth place, number 18, Mick Stace and Dylan Newton. And sixth place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. 123.31 was the winning time, 123.31. What a race, Jim.
and indeed it was and I'm just thinking that maybe conditions are going to be absolutely perfect for the final and what a race that could be we know that those that have sat there in the pit box for this second semi-final know exactly what they've got to do they've got to make sure they get enough points to get into that final but then remember the change that was made to this competition about I think about probably five six years ago now that you don't score points in the final it is a straight race first over the finishing line becomes the British Masters champion so at the moment the priority for these crews is to make sure they get enough points from this semi-final or to add to their running total and make sure they get a place in that final this is quite a race here Jim I don't, I'm not sure if I'd want to predict the winner from this lot there's some very quick crews in this one all of them have been going well as well well you're absolutely right and I'm thinking that you know, one or two that we could say started slowly and have got faster. Maybe they've been changing things. I always talk about this, is whether they've uh, decided on different tyre pressures, whether they've decided on different gearing almost, and, you know, tweaking with the outfit all day long, and it comes good at the end of the day. They're certainly taking their time getting to those uh, starting positions which they all chose during the interval, as you heard. Marshals to move back through the outfits. Oh, we've just seen a terrific first semi final. What can this second semi final do? They get underway and they all move off together as they go down that back straight. While the recovery to one of our outfits on the start line is pulling a wheelie, but into this finish. So they go and coming up past me for the first time. Tom Cross is right on the inside. Colin Blackwater made the best of it. Jamie Simmons is in third place at the moment. But that's certainly not consolidated yet as they go down the back straight. Tom Crosser looking very, very strong. It'll be interesting perhaps to see what time he puts up because he's looking now to have it all his own way. Colin Bloodborne in second though, he does look fast in second and he's much tighter off that top corner this time. Matthew Morella's now working hard to try and make up ground on Robbie Simmons who's in that third place. Rob Bradley also is having a awful start where he nearly threw passenger Ryan off the back. But Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards looking very good here, they're taking a very tight line off of this top corner and that seems to be working for them at the moment. Rob Bradley's now pushing Matthew Morola. So Matthew Morola and Rob Bradley at the back find themselves a bit out of position, having to build up some speed on Robbie Simmons. Now Rob Bradley is drawing in Matthew Morola for that fourth. But at the front, no mistakes here. It's going to be a win for Tom Crosser and Wayne Rickards. They take a fine win in this semi-final. It's a race to the line for fourth. Very close between Rob Bradley and Matthew Morola for fourth and fifth. And Dale Fish finishing sixth. So, the results of race 32, the right-hand sidecar second semi-final, sponsored by MRL Grab and Tip. It was a win for number 29, Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards. Second place, number 25, Colin Blackbourne and Carl Pugh. Third place, number 9, Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey. Fourth place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Wharton. Fifth place, number 15, Matthew Morola and Andy Wilson. And sixth place, number 20, Dale and Jordan Fish. The winning time, 1 minute 21.12. 1 minute 21.12. So, the lap scorers and point scorers are next to me. They've got the uh, finalists for the solos, in fact, and we'll get them to you at some point. They will be getting the sidecar finalists as well, of course, and that will be two races then 
to decide our British Masters Champions for 2022 and who will go into the history books this year. Well, indeed, Gareth, and before that, we've got the left-hand sidecars. They've been scoring points over three rides this afternoon to get themselves a qualifying position in this final. And uh, the line-up is number 128. That's Martin Cuff. And... Uh, Luke Steve, oh no, not Luke, I was going to put um, Colin Clark on there instead, but um, number 16 of course is Josh Penfold and Daniel Woodbridge, 98, that's our current British champions Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips, 25 is Tom Penfold and Kelvin Parks Easton, 193 Steve North and Adrian North, and number 125 Billy Penfold and Luke Stevens. So always a popular class in this part of the country. And some very, very experienced and good exponents of the sport. So they get underway and they come down past us for the first time. Who's made the best of the starts? It is Martin Cuff has made the best of it, but Josh Penfold is right there with him. And number 98, Mark, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips are in that front three. You can see that Martin Phillips has gone very, very wide, got himself into second place as he got that back three. Martin Cuff and passenger Colin Clark making the best of it. As they come round past me for the second time, they've certainly got the lead. On Martin Phillips and Josh Penfold in third. So starting to get strung out now as the, the gaps start to open. Martin Clark, very quick all afternoon. So Michael Phillips in that second place, no answer to Martin Cuff and Colin Clark, they really have been in sensational form this afternoon. Haven't looked like being beaten, of course they were headed earlier but very quickly made their way past the lead. They won all three of their heats and now they're winning this final con very, very considerably. So Michael Phillips in that second though, he is getting closer to Martin Cuff, he is not letting him get away. But I don't think he's within striking distance, so this is looking very good for Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge in that third place. They've had some good rides this afternoon as well. So it's back on Penfold and Scott on the back straight. But Martin Cuff and Colin Clark this time around. It's to be the last time Michael Phillips is going to have another go on this last turn. He's certainly got in very quick. But Martin Cuff and Colin Clark take the win. They take the victory. Michael Phillips second, third place will be Josh Penfold, ahead of Steve North in fourth. fantastic result for them. We shall give them a round of applause as they come past us before giving you the official result of the left-hand sidecar sponsored by the Boiler Engineer. Oh, so the left-hand sidecar is going straight into the pits instead. So a big well done to them. So I will give you the results of race 33. It was a win for number 128 Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. Second place, number 98, Michael Phillips and Tim Phillips. Third place, number 16, Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Fourth place, number 193, Steve North and Adrian North. No fifth or sixth finisher. The winning time, 1 minute 44.65. And in this final, these eight competitors, of course the points don't count anymore, the points are over. 
The points were to get them into the final. Now it's all about where they finish in this race. Top point scorer, number 109, Zach Wagner. Next to him, number 169, James Wright. Number 37, Chris Harris, is the third place point scorer. Number 29, Henry Atkins. Number 72, Jake Mulford. Number 11, Paul Cooper. Number 86, Paul Hurry. And number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. So those are the eight competitors who will be racing for the British Masters title for 2022. One of those eight riders will go into the history books. Of course, the British Masters began in 1982. Who will it be in 2022? It will be one of those eight in the solos. So here they come onto the line for this very, very important four laps, which decides the British Masters champion for 2022. Whether you like the format or not, you cannot argue that this really does create some drama. Whoever performs the best over this next four laps will be the British Masters champion for 2022. Any predictions, Jim? Am I allowed? <laughs> well, it's, it's always difficult. You know, I don't like making predictions because, as you learned earlier on, that when you're talking about somebody taking over and then they go and drop it, you feel a right what's it. But, you know, I mean, I do think it's going to... I mean, I was going to say between Zach and Chris, but... James has got so much quicker as the day's gone on, so I can't write him off. Paul Hurry, we know, has got the experience. We know he's ridden this circuit many, many times. He could certainly put a spanner in the works. You know, Henry Atkins, a youngster, but my God, has he come on so well, and he looked fantastic this afternoon. Jake Mulford as well. Paul Cooper, lots and lots of experience, already qualified for the European has had some great results out on the continent this year. Can he pull it out of the bag? And as you quite rightly say, it does create the drama because it is just one straight race. So the ropes go up, we see the starter move away, the tapes go up and we get underway. Who's made the best of the starts? I can see Chris Harris in the front. Zach Pricknett goes in after him, and it's Paul Hurry that's on the inside. And they go around the, well, as they go around the outside. Now Chris Harris has got himself to the front and Paul Hurry is chasing him. Well, I mentioned that Paul Hurry knows this circuit well and he's certainly head down going after Chris Harris as they come into this bottom turn. Those three getting away from the rest of the field at the moment. Zach Picknick trying to stay with Paul Hurry as he comes off that bottom turn. And Gareth, goodness me, another win for Chris Harris. Well, he's just got to hold it together because he's looking good at the moment. But Paul Hurry is looking quick in that second place. He's not allowing Bomber to get away. But he's got to have eyes in the back of his head because Zach Vitnick's all over the back of Paul Hurry as well. What a terrific ride this is from Chris Harris to Alfred. Masters title for the second time. Paul Hurry in that second place. Surely he'll be delighted to be on the podium once again. Paul Hurry right neck as well. One of the riders has stopped towards the back. I think that was James Royce. But now they come. It's going to be another title for Chris Bomber Harris. He defends his title successfully. Paul Hurry second. Zach Frankneck third. Paul Cooper finishes in fourth. Chad Wurzfeld fifth. Henry Atkins sixth, Jake Mulford seventh, and it was James Wright that we lost somewhere out there. So fantastic racing all afternoon, and a brilliant final for Chris Harris. 
He deserves all the plaudits here. A professional meeting run by Chris Harris. A fabulous win once again. Back to back British Masters champion. as they come past us some brilliant racing this afternoon Paul Cooper and Henry Atkins rode well all day of course fourth place for Cooper and sixth place for Atkins two very good results for them Solo final sponsored by MRL Grab and Tip. It was a win for number 37, Chris Harris. Second place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Third place, number 109, Zach Breitnick. Fourth place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Fifth place, number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. Sixth place, number 29, Henry Atkins. And seventh place, number 72, Jake Mulford. No eighth finisher. The winning time, 1 minute 23.18. 1 minute 23.18. So congratulations to 2022 British Masters champion, Chris Bomber Harris. Now, we turn to the sidecars, and will it be 37 in the sidecars as well as the solos? Well, indeed, Mark's got it all to do now, hasn't he? Because he's seen Chris Harris take 2021. He's taken 2022. Mark got 2021. He's been through the whole race sheet this afternoon, unbeaten. He's just got one more ride to go. But plenty of spoilers lining up alongside him. We've seen it before, Jim. We've seen how this final can get to people. It can cause something to happen right at the end. It's such a, a close thing with these sidecars. This is the big race for them. We know that this is the one that they think about when they're getting ready in January. Oh, absolutely right, Gareth, because, I mean, this is effectively our British Championships. We call it the British Masters, but it is the one title that for 1,000cc sidecar racing is in the history books. There's names that we refer back to many, many times, and they've got an opportunity now. They've got into the final, and they can put their name on the history books. Oh, 
actually um, decided what gates they're going from, so quite why they're uh, taking their time getting in there, I do not know, but I can see Tom Costa has got himself up there and ready to go. This is the one we've waited for. This is the big right-hand sidecar final, sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Gary Palmida, a great sidecar driver in his time as well. So we look to that far side, and we can see that the last of the outfits are now coming into line. The trick to watch for is to see that marshal in the centre there with the orange bib on, if he moves back behind the side cars, then you know the tapes are going to go up. Well, there he goes, up go the tapes. And we get underway, who's made the best of those starts as they come down that back straight, it is Mark Cosser that's got himself for the front as he goes in to that first turn. And the rest sort themselves out as they come down that first turn. Who's made the break? Well, Mark Cosser is being chased hard by Colin Blackburn at the moment. Terry Saunders is on the outside of those front three, but he's got caught up in the dust and he drops back as the riders go through on the inside of him. So he starts to open up with Mark Cosser snapping his authority on this one once again. Comes round that bottom turn, looking absolutely fantastic. He's got the right line. Colin Blackburn is now coming under pressure from Trevor Heath on the inside of him. And Trevor Heath is pushing hard for that second place. Well, Colin responds going down that back straight, but Trevor Heath is not letting him go as he goes into this bottom turn. So Trevor Heath all over the back of Colin, obviously Mark Cross has gone here, but Trevor Heath is plugging away on that inside. He's much more quick in the turns. Again, he's gone to the outside this time for Colin Blackburn. He's switched to the outside. He's going to cut back to the inside as well. This race, the second, is intriguing. He's got lots of speed on the back straight. But still Colin Blackburn holds on to that second place. He's got to keep it tight if he wants that second place. The British Masters champion is Mark Cross, but very close on the line. Incredibly close on the line between second, third and fourth as well. But once again, the British Masters champions for 2022, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams, a faultless performance by them this afternoon. Uh, what can you say about this crew? They are absolutely dominant in this sport. The all-conquering Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams, British Masters champions again. Congratulations to these riders. Some fantastic sidecar racing this afternoon. It really isn't for the faint-hearted, I'm sure you agree. But another tremendous, dominant performance by Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams. When will their reign end? They are absolutely dominant in this sport. There's no other word for it. A fabulous performance by Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. By far their best performance to date with that third. What a close finish it was. Great result from Colin Blackburn as well to finish second overall. I'm sure we'll see the British Masters champion come round once again in a moment. But the results of the right-hand sidecar final sponsored by Mr and Mrs Gary Palmer. It was a win for number 37, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. Second place, number 25, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. Third place, number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Fourth place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ryan Walton. Fifth place, number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. And sixth place, number 29, Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards. Mark Cosser doing some donuts. Seven times British Masters champion, Mark Cosser. The winning time, 1 minute 19 exactly. 1 minute 19 exactly. Fabulous racing this afternoon. I'm sure that we will see Mark and Gareth once again come past us in a moment. 
If you have got to dash off, then do have a safe journey home. We will be having a presentation behind us in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes. If you would like to loosen the ropes, it really would help the, the uh, club. We just need someone to give them away. <laughs> so, we just need someone to give them away. So, we just need to give them away. I like it. 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 One o'clock this afternoon, you know, I said to you, would you make a prediction? What did I say? I think it was far across for the side cars and three days and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just wish all the cookies here. Cookies <laughs> here. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm going to put it on video. You just come to the dog and then you try to get back on it. I'm watching it. Yeah, yeah. 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 He was like this. Yeah, 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 he was like this. Do you think oh, 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 He's <laughs> not a picture of me and Harry when he hits me in the first one. Yeah, he can work out. He can see me the He's not a picture of me. 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 He's not a picture of me.
The lead up to this week, we didn't think we were going to actually be here because it was found Wednesday night on found All of the SoCal was then cracked well right after last week. So I spent all of Thursday and Friday remaking the whole SoCal and then uh, yeah, finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. I mean, I know I spoke yeah. to Matt earlier on this afternoon and he said he was doing a lot of rebuilding of an engine during the week, but yeah. I didn't have a clue that he'd been rebuilding the sidecar. Well, I asked him to do a minor thing. Yeah. 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 Certainly did work. And Gareth, I mean, yeah. a brilliant ride once again. Enjoy yeah. the circuit. Yeah, it's a bit bumpy towards the end, but then the final thing like I'll let you get up on the rostrum, guys, and we're giving you a round of applause once again in third place for the British Masters of 2022. Joe Heath and Sam Heath. And Sam Heath coming back one and for you for our champions of 2022. <laughs>
I'll catch you in the week. Yeah. Yeah, that's been good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.